Hello, listening people. Hey, hey, hey. Hey. You are listening to Spin Polish Presents Unappreciated Masterpieces. Now, I know what you're saying. Why are we called Spin Polish? It's likingly because we're always spitting and we both happen to be Polish. Isn't that right, Bartek? That's correct. My name is Bartek, and that the thing you said is also correct. And your name's Ryan Slowinski. I really love the fact that you refuse to say your own last name, but you're like, I'll mention yours, Ryan. Because but... <laughs> you you like to mention your last name, so I did it for you. It's to emphasize that we're both Polish. I mean, I mean, Bartek doesn't give it away enough. Oh, gee, what country is the name Bartek from? <laughs> Obviously, New Zealand. Oh yeah. Jeez, he's an islander. Bartek. No. Yeah. So yeah, exactly. I mean. <laughs> So, you're listening to Spin Polish Presents Unappreciated Masterpieces. What do we do on Unappreciated Masterpieces? Good question, audience, and me directing it to myself. Thank you. What we do is we do feature-length audio commentaries for movies that seemingly don't deserve a commentary. Why seemingly? It's because they're unappreciated masterpieces, meaning they are films that have not gotten the love, attention, and critical reception that they deserved. And they are, in fact, gems. Things of beauty. The effort and dedication were put into these types of movies, and the general masses and the critics just haven't appreciated or seen the wonderment of these pieces of art. Is that fair enough to say, Bartek? Absolutely. I was hanging out with Meet Dave the other day, and he's just a perfectly good guy. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So these types of films really are the ones that we take a look at. We talk about them, and we try and find what happened to make them unappreciated, but mostly to highlight, to to shine a light upon the beauties and efforts that were put into these movies, to show you and to show ourselves through a journey of whimsy that these mo movies are, in fact, great movies. Bartek, yeah. what is the great unappreciated masterpiece that we are going to do today? Today we are doing Zdont Wopałach. Look, I don't know what he said. I don't know what that means. I do not... Look, we've been doing this for now 30 episodes, if we don't include the 26 minutes of an episode that was like Mike. So, 30 episodes. And I would assume after that you're speaking Polish, but maybe he's taking the mickey this time and he's speaking Islander. I don't know. <laughs> I think if he was speaking Polish this whole time, he may want to mix it up once in a while. Whoa. Just throw, throw There's a random yeah. voice random. here. Yeah. <laughs> maybe uh, we'll mix it up yeah. first. I just walked in the room. I'm okay. There's a random... Maybe that's Bartek's... Oh, maybe it's me under being able to understand your Polish through another person's voice. Maybe oh, yeah. that's it. So what is the movie we're watching, Bartek? <laughs> look, and this time I don't blame you for not knowing what Bzdons Wopałach is, because when I looked it up, I said, Mom, this movie's called Bzdons Wopałach. And she's like, wow, those are words that you wouldn't even know. And I was like, yeah, you think? <laughs> I like how your mum said that. Like, yeah, whoa, those are words you would know. It's like, what? Yeah. wow. It basically, like, it translates to, like, literally toddler in... A specific word for trouble or something. We're watching know. Toddler in Trouble? That's my no, 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 favourite to movie. Toddler in a specific word for trouble. <laughs> toddler in a specific word for although, trouble? Although, you know, most people call it Baby's Day Out from <gasps> 1994. Baby's Day Out in 1994, written by John Hughes, the film legend who brought us such critical acclaimed movies as Home Alone. The penguin and the shiny thing? What? Wasn't that a movie, Penguin and the Pearl or something? Was that John Hughes? Wasn't it? I don't know. I love John Hughes. He obviously Sixteen Candles and Breakfast Club, which we've referenced so many times in this he, show. Planes, do, trains, and automobiles. Did he do Weird Science? I no. I don't think. I don't know. I'm not. I, I don't know if he did. But Weird hmm. Science is pretty weird. Because I've but, got a three pack at home of Breakfast Club, Sixteen Candles, and Weird Science. Maybe. So maybe. It's, so, but you know what? Oh, it's called the Brat Pack thing. Yeah. It's, you know who's a brat that we need to help us. Because we don't always do these alone, do we? Sometimes we need a brave soul. Someone who's willing to get their critical perception blown by watching a cinematic classic. Who is the brave soul helping us this time, Bartek? The brave soul, spelt S-O-L-E, surprisingly. <laughs> Today is the one who brought this movie to our attention, surprisingly. Ladies and gentlemen, it is our good buddy, 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 
Oliver Menhennet. Hey guys, what's going on? Hello, Oliver. Can I call you Ollie? You can call me whatever you want. Okay, Peter. Uh, That's not my name. <laughs> you said what? You said whatever I, I wanted. I immediately regret this. <laughs> you would regret. I would regret everything from here on in. Uh. So this is true. Ollie, Peter. Peter, bro. <laughs> Peter, as in Saint Peter, he made a lot of d- mistakes too. Didn't make many movies, but you know, there's always time for that. <laughs> My favorite Saint Peter movie would have to be Baby's Day Out, <laughs> which we're doing now. Baby's Day Out, as Bartek mentioned, was unknown to me and unknown to you. Is that right? Yes. We had not seen it, but Peter here brought it in. Said, "You guys love the show, listen to it all the time." I recommend it to all my friends and family who also named Peter. You recommend it to me once. I'm like, dude, it's me. <laughs> yeah, it's me. <laughs> I don't even know the guy. And he walked up to me in the street one day and said, hey, Ryan. I'm like, who are you? And he's like, I'm a big fan of the show. Have you listened to it? And I'm like, no, I haven't actually. You got me there. <laughs> and, um, and he said to me, he said, my name's Peter. And I'm a big fan of St. Peter's critically acclaimed classic film written by John Hughes. Baby's Day Out. Have you seen it? And we're like, no, we haven't seen it. Oh. And um, what a mistake that what was. What a travesty. I'll be honest. We had not seen this movie. And and had been building up to doing this movie because Bartek and I talk to each other on Facebook. And he's like, oh, I've you know, Oliver wants to do this movie, but we've got to book in a date because he's got exams or something or other, this, this and that. And it was like back and forth for several weeks. And mm. during that time... I was, like, mentioning to previous guests on the show and people I met in the street other than Peter that that we would be doing this and I hadn't seen it. And people such as our previous guest, Sam Langsford, would be like, you haven't seen Baby's Day Out? Oh, that was a seminal film when I was growing up. Seminal. That's the perfect way to describe this movie. Look, I'm going to be honest. Mm. If you haven't seen this movie, you're probably covering your eyes blind in a cave on Mars because it is quite clearly like phenomenal and mm. i don't think it's too much to say it's the best movie ever made i'm it's not clearly the best movie ever you made. can you, you can look at it anyway a lot of it is subjective i'm gonna be honest like you can have your own opinion you can crit- critically analyze movies about mm-hmm. what is good and bad um you can look at all the great directors you can look at you know scorsese, scorsese tarantino you, you can look at all their movies and you can argue about whether or not it's good yeah. This, this movie is just objectively the best yeah like, it is there's not it, it, really it, any competition. matter of fact that's how it is. Like, that's a matter of fact that it is the best movie ever. Now, mm. Bartek, when you had to watch this movie, mm-hmm. did you know what it was about? Mm. Yeah, Reese, Alf, uh, who's been a guest on the show before, told me the, a little bit about it, and he said that it is pretty much perfect for our show. Mm. But did you know what it was about? He told me that there were, like, mobsters and there was a baby, but I didn't really piece the two together. Good stuff. (laughs) Can I just say really quickly, a lot of movies, you might jump into them, you might see them in the movie theatre. Some of the titles can be confusing. Like, for example, um, like, uh, a long time ago, I don't know what you consider a long time, but when Jupiter Rising came out, what even is that? Jupiter Ascending? Sorry, Jupiter Ascending. My bad. What does that title say to you? And the answer is nothing. It's confusing. Who knows? Baby's Day Out is exactly what it says to be. It it's is a baby's a ba- day out. He's having a day out. He's a baby. <laughs> more, what more do you want? Honestly, I, it's right there. I the said top. to my girlfriend when watching this, I was like, wouldn't it be a plot twist if this movie took place in a year? <laughs> <laughs> it was like, baby's day out. And like the kidnapping went on for like a year. Um, okay. I'll be honest. Prepare to have your mind blown, guys. Because my perception of this movie... <laughs> Before watching, <laughs> before watching it, we'll, we will start the movie Deep soon. Breaths, but Ryan. before watching this movie, I looked at the IMDb page mm, yeah. and I read the synopsis. <laughs> but before I read the synopsis, I saw the poster, and you know how IMDb has that new thing, newish thing, where they have like the trailer, uh-huh. and they just have like a still image of a shot from the trailer. Yes. yes. After looking again after the movie, that shot that is in there is not in the movie. <laughs> but the baby, <laughs> the baby is on the girder. Yeah. You can't really tell after you, unless you've seen it. And it's got like helicopters or like lights behind it. It's nighttime. And there's a building, and the way that it looks. It's so close on the baby that the buildings behind it look tiny. And I thought that this was a movie in which 
<laughs> a baby <laughs> got enlarged. So this is. Really- <laughs> I thought this was kind of like. <laughs> Honey, I blew up the kid yes, or blew up the baby, and I thought that. for some reason. And then I read the review. I mean, the, <laughs> not the review, the synopsis. And there's something in it where it's just like the baby has a big day out, and this baby's something like it was really confusing because I thought, okay, this baby g- gets big, right? And there's something in the synopsis that's basically like, and the baby manages to outfoil, outsmart, and outgrow the villains. Oh. <laughs> and I'm just like, I'm, you're, just you're, like, you're, I'm yeah. waiting for this baby to enlarge for a large portion of this movie. Can I, can I t- and I thought, right. it's going to happen. It's going to be like Ant-Man, Ant-Baby. Right. Can I tell you something, though? This, from a medical perspective, Technically <laughs> correct. Technically correct. Okay, so babies are still growing, right? Yeah. Their brains, their bodies, they are actively still growing. They are gaining in size, weight, height, girth, length, every single like measure yeah. you can think of. They're growing. Like me. Grown men, they finish their growth. They, yeah. They, they have finished. If anything, that they're shrinking. If anything. And, and, and many of them do. Medically standing. <laughs> yeah. I've seen many small grandpas. So... And that's that's completely correct. I mean, that's that's the beauty of it. It's it's not only funny, it's not only amusing, it is an accurate, medically accurate representation of what we are looking at. And here's the funniest part. I got the title of the movie wrong. <laughs> <laughs> when Barting said, we're watching Baby's Day Out, and I saw that thing, and I was like, oh, it becomes a big baby... I looked to try and watch Big Baby Day Out. And then what? I'm like, I tried to find Big Baby's Day Out because I thought the baby was big. Okay. <laughs> like, I didn't uh. know if like the baby enlarges or in my idea that this family has like a giant baby and it escapes. And then I was like, oh, I can't find it. Oh, obviously, because I was stubborn. I wasn't going to go back to the IMDb page or go through my conversations with Bartek to look for it. I was like, obviously, it was Baby's Big Day Out. And I'm like, can't. I can't find it. And then I was like, oh, I'll submit and I'll look for it. Oh, just baby's day out. All right. I'm going to be honest. When, when I watched these movies all these years ago, because you guys hadn't seen it, I brought this to your attention. Tell you, I brought this to your attention because I had seen it and I was quite fond of it when I was younger. Um, and I also got the title wrong as well. I remembered it as baby's big day out as well. And I could have seen that. I'm not insane. So prepare to get your copy of big baby's day out or baby's big day out <laughs> or baby's day out. It's a trilogy Actually, it's more than that. It's a series because there's there would be more of these movies if 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 God would have allowed. But unfortunately, no. But they so, even set it. Oh, up. they set we it will, up, but yeah, we'll get we there. Talk that. So get your copy ready because I imagine all of you guys have a legal copy prepared to watch <laughs> in, with us in 720p. Oh, in yeah. se- yes, that our is copy amazing. is in 720p, so HD quality. If anything, <laughs> this should have been a Blu-ray version if I was really dedicated. But yeah. okay, so prepare yourselves because we're gonna start this bad boy in three, two, one. Play. So off we go. 20th Century Fox brought this masterpiece to us. Good observation. I love that they don't scale up that opening. It's like. No, if anything, yeah. they've made it meaner looking with like palm trees yeah. in the background like, and the newest, newest in- incartation of it. So here's something that I loved about the movie. Um, not only did it tell us the movie instantly. With the opening credits, which might I add, feel like they go for twenty minutes. Oh, uh, I think they actually do. I, I mean, <laughs> and then when they grab the book, Baby's Day Out, I'm uh, like, holy shit! This is what my understanding was. Mm, yeah. Maybe the baby isn't big. <laughs> Wait, maybe the baby is big in the story that's being read to it. So I thought it was going to be like Princess Bride, where it's like uh, the nanny's telling the baby the story, so we're getting the story. Yeah. But no, apparently the baby lives out the story in real life. Yeah. You know what? This is what really hit me when I was watching this, again, um, that I don't think really occurred to me when I was younger. You don't get many movies these days with this level of meta storytelling. You mean foreshadowing, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's kind of like you're telling a story within a story about mm. a story, and it's its own story. It's it's on a whole nother level to standard movies. I mean, even yeah. the opening, you don't have just words that come up. You show a book. Yeah, you know, exactly. It's, it's a whole nother level. It's like if... If you told me that Wes Anderson was a writer on this movie, I wouldn't be surprised. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? So... Um, you, you know, also, because there's a lot of music playing during these opening <laughs> yeah. credits. It, it kind of reminded me of um, Bruce Broughton brought us the 
good tunes, I guess. Yeah, you know how some <laughs> some some movie musicals they start by having like a kind of instrumental medley of all the music that was in the movie. Yeah. So that's yeah. kind of what I was thinking was going on here. Oh, okay. Did you realize that Fat Tony was going to be in this movie? <laughs> yes, Reese told me. Uh, He's like, uh, Fat Tony's in there. He does the Fat Tony voice. How do you pronounce his last name? Mackenzie? No. Tony? Tony, the actor of Tony. Yeah, it's Tony. His first name's Fat. Oh, it's, <laughs> I, if you showed it to me, it'd be like, uh, Mate- really Mate- Mategna or something? Yeah, Mate-Mega? yeah, yeah. I have him in the reviews and I forgot. To... He, he was the first name in the credits. I know, because he's the main hero of the story. What if yeah. it's one of those like silent Jews that's like Mategna? Something Here's like something that. that's interesting about this movie. I don't know if you guys thought about it, but if you took all the dialogue away yeah, and had this in black and white mm. with funky music over the top of it, you, and you told me, Ryan, this came out in 1942 <laughs> and they just on purposely chose to do it silent back then, I would believe you. I, it's a classic. <laughs> it truly is a classic in every sense of the word. When... I, I wrote notes for this movie, as I often do, and my first note was, we're off to a great start with Boo Boo as the first <laughs> words that we hear. To but, be, and to be fair on that note, we are now watching it with no sound, so we're part of the way to your theory of... It's a silent movie? Yeah, it's only so, found a grayscale here's, copy. Here's how the silent movie version goes. This is a kidnap situation already where this nanny's obviously a crazy person because she is so crazy during this movie. Like... She's like, do we have to? He's like, do we have to read it? And he's just like, the baby's like, boo boo. It's like, oh, all right, we'll read it, I guess. And she's, she's got yeah. the crazy eyes. She is held hostage. This kid has read this book over a hundred times. She doesn't want to be there. She's complaining about it. I mean, she look, is at the mercy of this little tyrant in front of her. If the next scene was the parents come in to tell um, Bink, baby Bink, yeah. that the nanny quit or killed herself, <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, uh, so... This whole opening is sort of jarring. You know mm. what I love about this opening? Not yeah. only does it have Lara Flynn Boyle, who, who, who before this was doing the critically acclaimed TV show Twin Peaks, mm. and has moved on to this and X-Men 2... I mean, not X-Men 2. I mean, Men in Black 2 <laughs> as the villainess. Oh, so right. she's done really great with her career after doing the critically acclaimed Twin Peaks, but you get the dad here, who I thought was going to serve a point. Yes. And mm. he's one of those great characters in the many lists of... We haven't had a dad like this since Tim Robbins in Zathura. Yeah. <laughs> Where you think that they're going to do something. You think that they're going to be important. You think they're going to have a character. But they don't. And the, the dad still... Uh, it's great stuff. You know, surprisingly, even Dicky Roberts was sort of like that. Like, he was, you know, a real dick in there, but he didn't appear that much. No, mm. Dad, I guess the recurring themes, thanks to Steven Spielberg, is uh, in modern blockbuster cinemas, obviously like this, is the highlighting issues of daddy issues. Mm. Because Spielberg has lots of daddy issues. Yeah. I think the daddy issue in this movie is the kind of lack of proper characteri- right, uh, characterization of the dad in the actual well, usage. And mm. this is about this is about his scene right here. This so is his scene. this is yeah, this is definitely this, his biggest. This moment. is a scene where he didn't even think to say goodbye to his kid. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Wowzer. I personally like the butler. Yeah. who just disappears. Like, we, don't see, we don't see him again. Which yeah. makes me wonder if he was in on it. I literally thought that the <laughs> butler knew some... Like, he knew that there was, like, a fake photographer or something. Oh, yeah. If I was a butler, I would know that. I mean, wouldn't it be a surprise if he was Alfred and this was, like, his day job and then his night job was being Bruce Wayne's mm. butler? <laughs> In Chicago. <laughs> well, okay. Gotham. This is all in Gotham. Gotham is Chicago and New York at the same time. Right. Come on. They're next door to each other. So Baby's Day Out is canon to the Batman universe. We've just established. Uh, yeah, I think so. Yeah, I so, think it's, it's fair to say. So, fair. Peter, you were saying before that we started this that you wanted to mention something during these opening, like during the earlier scenes that's going to be a recurring thing, or have you already mentioned that? I did mention it. It was to do with the storybook. Oh, yes. The storybook being foreshadowing of everything that's about to happen Mm. in this film. Oh, there he is. He hasn't done such great work since Memento. (laughs) I mean... There's Fat Tony. Fat Tony! I was watching this with my girlfriend, and she's like... I'm like, you know who that is? And she's like, oh, I know know him from something. And it was before we started talking. And I'm like, okay, you recognize him visually. And I'm like, (laughs) well, I'll give you a hint. He's a voice of a character that we grew up with. And she's like, oh, I'm listening to it. And, like, honestly, 
he talked in a pseudo French accent for a <laughs> good portion of this movie, being the photographer, and I just kept mm. yelling, "Stop doing that! Don't do that!" Because I'm trying to get my girlfriend, girlfriend to girlfriend guess it, right? And she couldn't guess it, and all I said was. Well, I'll quote you my favorite line, baby butt. Mm-mm. No, that's not the quote. <laughs> <laughs> I had to point out the baby butt. I, I had to say to her my favorite Fat Tony quote, which is, I don't get angry. I get stabby. You know, like, uh, whatever it is. Yes. Like, I don't get, when I get mad, I get stabby. And she's like, no, I, I don't remember that one. And then I just started quoting one of the most obscure Fat Tony ones, which was, what? It's rat milk. Healthy, <laughs> healthy oh, rat no, milk. That, yeah, and she episode. goes, oh, Fat Tony. But it's not yeah. like the Fat Tony quote that you would go, oh, oh yeah, Fat Tony said that. I haven't cried this much since Godfather 3. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I love Fat Tony. Uh, he's one of the greatest. But so Fat Tony's in this, the guy from Memento. And who's the other guy, you ask? Oh, it's it's obviously Clint Eastwood's son in Gran Torino. No, yeah. I thought you were going to say it's obviously the president's bodyguard in the Tim Burton movie Mars Attacks. Oh, of course. I rec- I actually did recognise him from that because I was bugging wow. me. I'm like, who is this guy? Because Mars Attacks one of my favourite movies. Ack, ack. So Absolutely. I know it back and forth. And I'm like, who is this guy? And I really recognised him when he had his hand bandaged up. I'm like, mm. why do I recognise him more now? Because in Mars Attacks, he has his arm bandaged yeah. up from being shot at or something. And I'm like, Vietnam flashbacks. Do, 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 do. Ryan, I, I've been a bit... I've been a bit down lately. Is it because there's... it has not been your big day out? No, oh. th- th- I've had. There's a problem, Ryan. Erectile dysfunction is a problem. It happened. No, 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 no. <laughs> guys, this is serious. I really want my baby's picture published in the newspaper. <laughs> it's so important. In... It's a social status thing. My favorite part is the other photographer's name is Old Willie, <laughs> <laughs> and he's been taking their photos since the Great Depression. Wow. How old is he? Literally, like, he's 70 or 80. Well, He would be, like, a, he had to, a ton. It's been, well, that was 1930s, this is 1990, so at least 60 years has passed mm-hmm. since he started photography. You know what really kind of, like, intrigued me about this opening sequence? These guys, all right, their outfits are a little ridiculous. As soon as they come up to the door, they are instantly met with suspicion and By condescension. the butler, yeah. And... I'm not entirely certain that that's justified. That guy was at the door. He was very cordial. He was forthcoming. He was professional. He had his lackeys in the back getting his getting his stuff. He he looked very presentable. Yeah. It's the sort of like high class condescension and judgment that I think is really plaguing our society. And I I for one will not stand. For it. I will not stand for it either. But you know what I won't stand for? The fact that the mother, the butler, and the nanny all agree to leave. A nine-month-year-old baby with three strange men mm. alone in a room. <laughs> Great stuff. <laughs> Wait a moment. There was a pig in that book. Did we even see a pig in this movie? I'm not was it at the zoo? Maybe? No, no, he only went to the gorilla section. Yeah. Uh, was that like, but was that like maybe a side thing at the zoo? No. Nah, like in the background? Maybe. No, they, they were in the monkey enclosure. Uh, we'll yeah. get to that. We'll but... get to the monkeys. Yeah. But you know what I really like? There are Here it is. First That's ball joke of one, the movie. One nut shot. And yeah. honestly, I did write down there was lots of nut shots in this movie. That was when Bartek and I talked about this on Facebook after having watched it. We were like, oh, we have a lot to say about this movie. And I was like, primarily all the nut shots uh, should, for me. Yeah, should we for, keep a counter? I, I, I think... One is the number so yes. far, and might I add, it's usually Fat Tony who gets kicked in the nuts. Mm. And you think not only kicked, kicked, oh, yes. punched, f- flamed, uh, skewered, Light, lightly grilled, uh, uh, <laughs> com- combusted. You know all this stamped, stamped. That was my favorite bit. Okay, <laughs> okay. we'll get to that. Okay, so Fat Tony. You think after this movie being kicked and hurt in the nuts so many times, he wouldn't have such a husky voice, but mm. who knew, right? Oh, man. <laughs> I love uh, the baby. I did a little quiz of my own, Bartek, actually. Bartek does quizzes. We couldn't find any quizzes for this movie, but the one I had closest to was Where Are They Now? Mm. Ah. And obviously the baby was played by twins but they used just a photo of one of them all grown up because this baby would now yeah. be like 24 25 years old or something like that and mm. he is a hunk <laughs> he is so oh no 
no. attractive. You cannot tell me that. He is so attractive. I am he, no, okay. he, he looks like he'd be like the no. handsome guy in a teen movie. Oh, and, uh, girls. and he's muscly, but not too muscly. Oh, I he's, didn't see that one. <laughs> he's what? You, you looked him up? No, I, I there was like a like a BuzzFeed or whatever thing. Like, where are all these people now? And there was like just kind of like a face shot. Oh no, no, I, I saw it. Saw it. And and here's the thing I said to my girlfriend: Hold yourself, Peter, because you're gonna need this. I said to my girlfriend, because I ask the appropriate questions, Biotech, as you know, people who listen to the show know, I asked the important questions, which yeah. was, if I showed you a photo of this guy now, after you had watched this movie, I say to you, would you fuck that baby? <laughs> <laughs> oh you do see God. the baby's bum. <laughs> you see his butt, you know what to expect. <laughs> oh my God. Uh, yeah? That's so, the thing. Okay. wait a moment. Bartek, would you fuck that baby? No. If you were inclined to men? No, no, not your type. He likes hairier men. What about you, Peter? I don't know. I mean, like, okay. When <laughs> yeah, yeah, do it, do take a thought in your am, baby. I am at so. a loss for words, but Oliver, you woke up today and you didn't know you were going to be asked, "Would you fuck that baby?" <laughs> you know what? I I did not believe that. I did not think that, and that was my mistake. You made that... many mistakes because clearly oh. you didn't do enough research for this movie. And right, you know what? I wish you didn't tell me that, and I'll tell you why. Because the rest of this movie, even though you know we've all done our own preparation and like looked forward to it, I'm glad I prepared um, that. Part. I'm going to go through the rest of this t- entire movie, and I hope listeners. I hope you do too. The, the rest of this entire movie, and I'm going to substitute any scene with a baby with just this crawling ripped dude in a diaper. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> this like full size male being picked up, for, like right now he's being picked up by Fat Tony. Just this bodybuilder dude. Yeah, yeah, right. Being carried through the window. And, and, and oh just, my God. and just when they're carrying him, they mutter under their breath, I'd fuck this baby. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you know to to baby's day out to the brothel. Oh woo! my god! Can I just say? Can I say? Oh my god, it's a trap. Can I say one more thing about the baby's bum? Uh, you, you know what? You could say a whole five minutes worth. <laughs> All right. Like, okay, look. We when we watch these movies, we sometimes make funny observations, stuff like that, and you know. To a normal person, they'd look at that and think, "Ooh, baby's bum, I don't like this. We, we'd probably look at that and make a joke out of it. Mm. Yeah, but... It's, really. it's the kind of thing we do. For this one, I didn't have that kind of prerogative there. I, I, I kind of was like, I don't need to see that. But then I got to thinking and I thought, I didn't want to see that. That was a thing that was in front of me. This movie has immersed me. Immersed him in mm. the It buttocks. immersed me to, like, I was there. I was like, a young baby. <laughs> it made me feel. It's the sign of a good movie. And we've said that once, we've said it twice, we've said it a thousand times. Once, Bartek. twice, three times a lady. You know, and as always, Bartek, you do bring up a good point, obviously. We're here to entertain and humour. But I was dead serious when I said, do you want to fuck that baby? I mean, dead serious, okay? We're going to put this up on the Facebook page. Mate. A picture of the baby <laughs> next to him grown up. Uh. And the caption will be, would you fuck this baby? Baby, and if you say yes, the Victoria you're... Police likes this picture. <laughs> what have I signed on for? Wouldn't it be a great thing if the if the Australian Scouts liked the picture? Oh I mean, my goodness! Oh my goodness! We have missed out on so much. The baby got kidnapped already. Mm. The muscle building baby. <laughs> <laughs> and Just the ripped. <laughs> you know, I like the ideas. But, you know, because they use twins. Wouldn't it be great if the other one's really fat? <laughs> like one of them's really ripped the other one's really fat my favourite thing that we missed out on is they're like do not call the cops mm. first thing they do they is do. call the cops that's actually I can't I couldn't I decide if them. that was responsible or not because honestly f- for one okay on one side of the argument they're terrible at following instructions they were giving a single rule one rule and they couldn't even do that on well, the other hand right something bad happens like this you are meant to call the cops that mm-hmm. is what you are technically meant to do so I'm a bit torn, Ryan. What's your uh, what's your opinion on this? Do you I think uh, my opinion is to fuck that baby. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, we're, oh, all right. Yeah. Use that as a soundbite, guys. If you have that as a ringtone, and you're just like, oh, who's calling me? It's Ryan. Yeah, I'd fuck that baby. <laughs> I was wondering if we were gonna get to that place, and we we kind of set up shop in the first fifteen minutes. <laughs> we 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 did. You know what's my favorite thing about this whole entire situation is you're right you i would call the police for sure but you know what's the great part is they serve no purpose in this movie yeah. you know what i like about this movie now but like i don't know if you had this theory now but like usually we do movies like surf ninjas and all that you have a, a comment that kind of sums up the world 
such as in Surf Ninjas, the world had frictionless ground. This is <laughs> There's my... There's a scene with a little wait, bit. Wait, wait. This is the world that this one lives in. I think, I think it's accurate. This is a universe where no one looks down. <laughs> or up, <laughs> like, for that matter. Or up. <laughs> but no, this is a universe where except, people except don't look down. Except for these down. three. Yeah, except, that's mm, what I mean. It's yeah. kind of like... We had a theory... I had a theory that in the movie Annie... One character lived in a move in the universe where everything's a musical, but he inhabited the bits in between songs, so he didn't know. Uh, I feel like this is a universe where nobody looks down except for these three guys, and they're the mm. only, and that's why they're considered crazy. In this universe, <laughs> there comes a point where the baby literally crawls across a busy road, sits in the middle, waves at cars, and none of them slow down oh. or. Or stop or swerve, and you know why? Because that's genius filmmaking right there. What it's trying to tell you is that the human society that was the 90s was a selfish society. A society that would run over a baby because they needed to get from point A to point B. Mm. And the fact that the kindest people in this movie are people who are in it for the money. The nanny is the kindest, but she's in it for money. Of course, she cares about baby Bink and his problem with growing excessively large, but that's a different story. And the other people who care are these guys. Yes, they care for monetary gains and selfish reasons such as not wanting to go to prison, but when they have him right now, such as the guy from Memento, he gives sincerity that you do not see in a normal kidnapping of babies movie. Absolutely. And also, really quick, love your point, by the way, quick shout out to product placement fruit rings i'm look it's weird it's not not fruit loops it's not ripping off anything that exists it's certainly i think uh, it's ripping off i think it is ripping off something and that clearly is nutrigrain oh you know what (laughs) i didn't want to mention it because i thought it would be a bit too obvious too obvious but i feel like such an eater i'm glad fruit loops it's an elephant in the room (laughs) (laughs) you're an idiot you're you're crazy man what what is wrong you said fruit loops earlier but i'm not going to mention that (laughs) except i did Shut up! Okay, so here's the point in which I do ask you guys. Who was your favourite character during this movie? Oh, does it have to be a human? No. 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 It can be a concept. Mm. <laughs> no. It has to be something. <laughs> okay, that's My cool. favourite character in this movie is the incessant pedophilia brought in with Would You Fuck That Baby? God. No. Damn. <laughs> Would you... <laughs> Who's your favourite character? I have one. Yeah, go Bartek. My favourite character is the veteran who the baby goes up to. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. That, that's the same actor from Home Alone 2. Yeah. Um, and he's also in another John Hughes movie called National... Uh, Treasure? No, National Lampoon's Vacation with Chevy Chase. Oh, he uh, plays the owner of Wally World, who's like Walt Disney. What about you? Who's your favourite? My favourite is in the zoo scene, so when they're in the uh, the monkey enclosure, there's an ape who's just sitting there, and his sole purpose is to egg on the, the bad guys. He literally, he's not on screen for more than ten seconds Is it total. the orangutan? Or... Mm. Oh no, he's... No, been, it's he, a chimp. It's the chimp, chimp. Oh, yeah. Okay, okay that's, he just that's great. And uh, you know what? He adds to the movie, and I'll tell you why. I'll tell you why. He he's there. He's there not as a principal character. He doesn't interact with the characters directly. He adds to the tone and the feel of the movie mm. by yeah, applauding what's going on. I don't know if you've okay. studied film like I have, but there's a term for that. He adds to the mise en scène of oh, the picture. Yeah, mise en scène. That means everything that's in the frame. Mm. Mm. Bartek, do you want to take a guess at my character? Now I'll give you a hint. They're only in one scene, but boy, is it a scene. Um, <laughs> it's earlier on in the picture. Okay, I'll, uh, I'm glad you said it because I was going to guess the before, sleepy guard <laughs> before the baby gets in the taxi. Before that's the like baby, halfway of the film. The fat lady. No. The bus driver. No. Um. <laughs> the lady in the daycare. No. Okay. That's a good one though. She was crazy. Yeah. She's uh, the nanny's sister. Uh, <laughs> but not English. Okay, Vartek. This is the favorite character of mine. There's a bit where the baby goes from one rooftop to another, and he somehow gets oh, inside of this older lady. woman's house. <laughs> <laughs> and here's the thing. Uh, the woman gets a knock on the door, and the baby is knocking on the door at the same time as the delivery guy. And this woman, why she's my favourite is... She's one of these characters, such as the detective that's about to come here, that makes you feel like they've lived before the movie. You know mm, what I mean? Like, yeah. you get characters such as, say, story, yeah. Marty Wolf from Big Fat Liar, or 
Rick from Casablanca, mm-hmm. where outside of the story that you presented in those 90 minutes, 100 minutes, whatever, you feel like they've had stories and lived life beforehand. And I feel that that woman in her small segment had some story that we haven't got to see. Like, he, she heard a knock at the door, and her reaction was that of an annoyance and sorrow. And it made me feel like, what well, was in that package? Maybe it was her divorce papers, you mm. know? Maybe it was a settlement for her dead son. Who knows what you was know happening? What? It was her dead son. I mean, quite clearly, we've set up they a They mailed universe. her dead son in the mail. We've set up... Okay, we've set up a universe... Where clearly the baby kidnapping is the center issue here. Mm. We are dealing with this baby kidnapping the entire length <laughs> of the movie. It's the central part. Wouldn't it be a yeah? You're film. right. It's a plot twist. It's a ransom for her son, <laughs> <laughs> and she's like really <laughs> bitter. <laughs> have you guys seen the Heath Ledger movie Two Hands? No, no, but I have seen the great Heath Ledger movie A Knight's Tale. Ah, okay. that's brilliant. In In Two Hands, it's you know you know about it, guys. No, I haven't mm, heard. No. I don't know it. Is it is it Australian one? Or is yes, it it's Australian. Okay, good. Mm. good. It's about um, Heath Ledger's this teenager who is, I think, teenager, young guy who's got who's <laughs> associated to this mob who has sent him on a job to meet this lady in her apartment and do something there. I think hand her something, get something from her. I'm not entirely sure what it was. I watched it in Year Eleven Media, um, and the problem with this move, the the conflict in the movie is that. She's a heavy smoker. Like, every single shot she's in, she's smoking. She And the, it, when you see her, she's dying of, like, lung cancer. She's still smoking while she's dying. I, 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 I relate to her, then. And the, the, the character in this movie kind of reminded me of her, because you only see her in one scene. Yeah. It's in her apartment, and you don't know much about her. Yeah. So maybe I there's feel. a relationship there. Maybe that's her in the future. Wouldn't it be a plot twist if she was a writer of Baby's Day Out? <laughs> like the book? I was oh. about to wonder. Yeah, yeah, I was thinking that. <laughs> what a plot twist. Wouldn't it be great if this movie, they're like, oh, right, he's following the book. And they get the writer of the book as like a forensic <laughs> and it becomes like seven. At, oh, my God. At the end, when they notice that uh, like he's everything following he's the doing book. is following the book, It'd be really funny if someone brought up, he saw a pigeon. <laughs> <laughs> but who would bring, who would bring it up? Yeah. Have, okay. you, have you guys ever seen the movie Stranger Than Fiction with Will Ferrell? It's in my DVD collection, so yes, I've lived it. I, oh, I haven't. I see that. Um, I was considering the possibility that this, it was almost this sort of determined, like, destiny type thing where the baby tries to find the author of the book in order to change his oh, own fate. Oh, right. What if we go one level? One level more. One mm. level more. Go on. <laughs> I'm keen for Peter's observation. Where this author has written a book about himself writing a book about the baby. Oh, wow. And we oh. just get in this sort of loop. You know, it becomes a lot... Di- we're already adding layers to the film. And the actor is John Hughes. <laughs> 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 and he's writing his next one, Home Alone. Did John, did John Hughes act? I don't know. I don't think so, no. I'm, I'm I think he was a writer. I'm imagining the baby walking into a Directed. room like the architect from The Matrix. <laughs> I see you have returned, baby Bink. It's great that you bring up The Matrix because the guy from Memento is also from The <laughs> Matrix. <laughs> uh, I think a second close character for me, Bartek, was that fat Italian guy that you see in every movie that phoned the police up to say that... <laughs> oh, the saw, Deputy John or something? I saw the kid... And they're like, I don't want your money. I don't want your charity that he accepts their money. And he's just like, yeah, hey, yeah, whatever. Hope you find the kid. Uh, yes. I like that guy too because he, he felt like amazing. Oh, yeah. I felt yeah. like he lived in a different movie as well. Like, I was gonna say, I'm surprised I didn't guess him, but then you said it's early in the movie. So, yeah. so he was early in the movie. Hmm. Uh, I love. Okay, he's after this scene though. This kid moves fast, by the way. Can I just point that out? That did you know that uh, that in some scenes it's a robotic baby, yeah, and in other scenes it's a stunt double, <laughs> so it's a full. Oh grown yeah, yeah, man. It's, it's it's him. It's that guy. It's Vern Troyer, isn't it? Yes, yeah, yeah Vern Troyer is mini me. Well, he is Mini-Me. definitely one of the stunt. Isn't I that, that great? Well. Yeah. When uh, you when you put that in your CV, I think that's how you got the part of yeah. Mini Me. And he was like, like oh, he, I saw your big baby's day out. Isn't he uncredited in this? <laughs> yeah, yeah, he's uncredited, uncredited, uncredited yeah. as I would be, because I'm too gracious to admit. Oh, and oh. here begins the. Oh, that was a stunt double. Uh, here begins. The great artistry that is the slapstick. We've had little bits of nut shots and mm. and squirting hot milk on a bald man's head, and that was a favourite part of mine. But here begins the real murder spree that is this movie, 
when they think the brilliant idea is let's get our obviously concussed boss who has still got his eyes closed and say, mm. jump. Uh, many I, times yeah. I wrote in this movie, Peter and Bartek, that I that the word dead, all of them are dead. Oh, yes. I, I felt like oh, that would be something yes. you'd write a lot in your notes. And you know what's something I did write that I haven't written in a very long time? Shatner. Where <laughs> they act like William Shatner. And I turned yeah. to my girlfriend and I said this. You know what this movie really is missing? William Shatner is the voice of the baby. Because oh, at a point I was expecting... Oh my god. At the point he's, I was yeah, expecting the baby to talk, like, proper. And mm. wouldn't it be great if he was like, boo, boo. And then it was just like, boo, boo. You know, I was... Boo. A boo. There are a few <laughs> shots where other... Captain's <laughs> log, boo, boo. There are, there are a few shots where other babies look at him and the camera, like, makes a point that they're looking at him. Yeah. I was wondering if there was going to be, like, a like a, the dogs in Scooby-Doo, a kind of subtitles thing, or maybe they would no. be dubbed, like, d- like, communication between the two, but... No. <laughs> I really was expecting... Okay, this is me, because I've seen baby geniuses. Ah. I was yes. really worried that there was going to be a love interest for the baby, because is... I saw, like, a female baby, yeah. and they were like... Yeah. Giving each other the goo goo eyes, but I guess they're giving each other the literal goo goo eyes because yeah. they're babies. Here she is, Ryan. Here she is. I don't know what her story is. I feel sorry for her. Look at her. She's got such gravitas to her performance. Mm. Her life is a complicated one. And this guy who looks like a weird mix of Bradley Cooper and Paul yes! Rudd. Yes! I Paul uh, Rudd. That's yeah. okay. I, that, that hit me as soon as he opened the door. I could not place it until you mentioned their name. And like, is it Paul Rudd and Bradley Cooper's brother? <laughs> like, mm. And he's a delivery boy for, for this old woman? And Paul he's Cooper. Like, it's Paul Cooper. Paul, Paul Cooper. Paul Cooper. Yeah. Or, or Brad Rudd. <laughs> <laughs> and... I love that. What, where he, he points, points this yeah. way and then runs the opposite way. Brilliant. Mm. I personally love everything about this movie. This movie brings a lot of tears. Mm. Because as a man, we are all men, arguably. <laughs> um, we have testicles. And when you see somebody... We've already brought this issue up on the show once. But when you see someone get hit in the testicles mm. in movies, and more so in real life... Yeah, there's Vern Von Troyer, whatever his name is. Like, there's there's Mini Me Chrome. When Vern you Troyer. see, when you see someone get hit in the testicles, you feel, mm, you feel yes. like ooh. And this movie just made me cross my legs throughout the whole experience and going ooh. And you know what? Something really great. I want to jump ahead. At the end of the movie, it takes place in a construction site, mm. and Fat Tony says to the big guy, "You jump up and get the girder." get the baby off the girder and he's like why can't why why can't the other guy do it he's like he's afraid of heights at mm. no point other than that scene did he show that he was afraid of heights no wrong they jumped across when? the building when they came out of the window like to, to start the chase on the rooftop he almost fell off and he was clearly like freaking out just before well wow. i mean yeah even if you don't have a fear of heights almost falling off a building is his acting like during that. that sequence though made it and kind of clear my thing about mm. eddie which is fat tony uh, news at noon, by the way. Uh, I think about Fat Tony is he replies with like the guy's like, well, why don't you do it? It's like, cause no one asked. If it was me, hmm. I think there's a weakness in this film. I think no, a strength that could be added to the strength already. I think it was me. He should have turned around and went. I've already fallen off a building today. Yeah. I've already had my testicles on fire. You fucking do it, you slag, and like smack him. <laughs> I love um, the uh, bus driver mm. reminds me of the actor Ned Beatty, who appeared in such classics as Deliverance. Thunderpants was he? He was in Thunderpants as the general. Really? Like, yeah, he reminds me of that actor, but younger, uh, because they're both equally tubby looking, and they got lots of things going on. Heavy set, heavy, heavy set, set men. Yeah. So Bartek, tell me about your experience watching this movie. Obviously, you didn't think that the baby was going to enlarge at any point. <laughs> And uh, did you have a favourite scene or section? Because there's lots of sequences. So, um, this is kind of jumping ahead a bit, but uh, when we read the IMDb trivia, that we read about Siskel and Ebert. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And then I went on YouTube and actually found them talking about it. It's like a three and a half minute video and I showed it to you. Um, and they were incredibly divided. Oh. Siskel thought it was a great movie and gave it a high recommendation. 
Ebert told him that he should be ashamed Shame of himself. Of himself. And Again, that... <laughs> Roger Ebert is a cunt. <laughs> we've had e- Roger Ebert be the antagonist for several movies we've done on this show. Uh... One time on the show, I jokingly said that Bartek was the antagonist of Spit and Polish. But you know who's a real antagonist? Roger Ebert. I've already said this once, but if there's ever a person to be happy for that they died... I'm not saying it's Roger Ebert, wow. but it's clearly Roger Ebert. Okay. Didn't like Sorority Boys, didn't like Scooby Doo, didn't like Big Baby's Day Out, or Baby's Big Day Out, or Baby's Day Out. He didn't like all three. There was one movie yeah. we did that he did give like three out of four to. But it was Big Fat Liar. Can I point oh, out something recent? Um, one small thing in this scene. This lady has just gotten off the bus. She has an extra baby yeah, in her well, bag. Yeah, well, you know why she can't feel that? Because she's, she's ripped. Because she's, she's fat. Ri- no. <laughs> because <You know? laughs> she's so <laughs> fat that she can't differentiate weight. I was going to say, like, they were calling her fat this whole time. What if under that dress, she just has the body of a Of Greek a grown-up big God. baby no, no. bink? <laughs> yeah, like, she is just... Like, she doesn't even notice the extra baby weight. She's yeah. just... She works on her body. She, and she just, humps she, him. <laughs> she... I, yeah. I mean, that aside. Let, <laughs> let's go back to what Bartek was trying to say. What were you trying sorry, to say, Bartek? Sorry. sorry. No, I, I gotta know. Roger no, Ebert's was, a dick. Yeah. That was a good, uh, you know, tangent. Um... So I was saying they were very divided and the, the points that they brought up, like Siskel thought that it was like a, a wondrous journey, like a child going through this new exploration, yeah. wanderlust, that kind of stuff. And Ebert said that it was like a an adult fear movie. Like adults watch this and if you take it like even slightly seriously, you're going to have like a heart attack for all, all the danger that the baby's going to get into. Mm. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So I... You know, I, I sided more with Siskel, obviously, because... This, obviously. Because this movie does have a lot of wonder in it. Like, I mentioned in... Oh, it was a, it was an episode we did not too long ago that there was a character really wide-eyed, like, just full of... Oh, Owen Wilson in Starsky and Hutch. We, we compared him to Ben Stiller, who's always kind of frowning. Owen Wilson always has this wide-eyed wonder about mm-hmm. him. And the baby is kind of like the Owen Wilson of this and movie. And he is blonde. And he is blonde. <laughs> and he does say, goo and wow. And yeah. Your other, question, your other question was, was there anything that stood out? And I, that's what I'm having a bit more trouble with. Because this movie is nothing but standout scenes. Exactly. Such as she beat the living Christ out of what is probably a six foot three yeah. muscle bound man. This, this lends to my theory about her being secretly ripped under that dress because yeah, she quite well... clearly has the force and power of someone in it. Not to make an obscure reference to Dragon Ball Z. Yeah. <laughs> but she's Here very much like Boo. Oh, yeah. Yes. <laughs> yes. If you told me she that made... she played Boo in a live action version, she played of... Margin Boo. Oh, I God. wouldn't be surprised. So, this is right. where. The... That's my comment. Sorry, by the way. That's my yes. comment throughout most of this is. I wouldn't be surprised. Yes. <laughs> this is a, a respectful... Re- Frictionless ground. Yeah, shit. respectful <laughs> reference to... You know, this, is a, just... this is where I was screaming. What, Look nobody down. looks down? Look... There's even a person that walks directly to the baby and just kind of veers off to the left. You know I'll, I'll point him out. Wait, wait, wait. We've got to get here. He's his baby crawl. Boy, does it crawl. This guy. He's walking uh, straight to it, then he veers off a little. Ab- you know what? It, even more than that, right? Even uh, assuming you were blind. Dun, dun. Assuming you were <laughs> dead blind. No one kicked the baby. No one actually brushed into it. You saw legs all around. Yeah. But at no point did the baby actually get stood on, got kicked. No. Or had the little soft spot in the back of his head poked. I mean, that was what I was thinking. Babies are delicate little creatures. Mm. And this little potato manages to roll from one location Probably. to the other. Also, might I add, actually, I do retract that my second favourite character was the Italian guy. I'm sorry, my second favourite character in this movie was the construction worker talking to Donald, the other construction oh, worker. Oh, right at the end of that sequence. Yeah. <laughs> Donald goes, I, holy crap, I think I saw a baby. And the other yeah. guy's like... Good night, Donald. <laughs> <laughs> what a crazy guy. Like, this is not the first time Donald's seen a baby do that. It's the fifth time this week. Honestly, it's becoming a problem. Classic um, Donald. So, Ryan, earlier when we were guessing your favourite character, Oliver said the lady in the nursery, and you said that was a good guess. This She woman. is crazy. Oh I mean, God. there's reasons for why she would be a good guess for me, because her name's Dawn, for a start, and she has the crazy nostrils. 
Like she has flared <laughs> nostrils. No- you can tell a person's personality by their nostrils now. You can tell a person's personality by their baby butt. So yeah, you can tell <laughs> from yeah. their nostrils. There is another character in this movie with crazy nostrils, but he's a gorilla. It, uh, is it a he or is it a she? Oh, we don't oh, know. I'm so sorry. I was thinking Sexist. it points to she because of the maternal instinct. And oh. it has big boobies. You know, I mean, yeah, good girls are pretty ripped anyway. This is the best part of the movie, <laughs> <Yes>. actually, where <laughs> it crawls and grabs the reporter's microphone. Uh, the camera pans down. Could you imagine being character. this guy? This <laughs> I didn't realize he was here so early. No, I did because they set it up early, and that's when it was like, oh, he's going to the veterans' home. I'm like, mm. oh, they've already set up old people. My favorite little bit is the camera pans down. Could you imagine if this was real life and you're sitting at home watching? We've got a missing baby. Here's what the baby looks like. Yes. And then the camera pans down, and there's the exact baby. It At no be, point did these reporters get fired or in trouble for their be, negligence. Sorry, it must be the world's most unpopular TV show, because no one who watched that television program called in and told them about that. Well, the old man probably could have, but he's too old. Ryan, <laughs> you, um, you've brought up on the show a few times, like, uh, with movies that are older than... A certain point. They don't have mobile phones. Mobile phones, exactly. Yeah. If this was a modern day movie, hey, they've got landlines. Yeah, yeah, no, no, no. But what I'm saying is, if this was a modern day movie, this incident here would be trending. Oh, oh yeah, it would be trending. It would be like hashtag fail report. Hashtag baby oops. <laughs> <laughs> hashtag baby's day out. <laughs> uh, and this woman is like, and she doesn't look down. Doesn't look down. Okay, can we talk about the mum? Sure. <laughs> <laughs> because that. she's here. <laughs> is she like our mum? Is she anything like your mum or your mum or my mum? No, my mum's loved me and she gave me attention, so no. <laughs> oh, fair enough, Peter. What about you, Bart? It's like your mum doesn't love you. She goes overseas all the time without you. So, is she like yours? Um, are we talking about the beginning where she was... Rich? <laughs> idolising the baby, almost? Like... You mean the beginning and end? Uh, and but more so in the beginning where she's really really wants that baby in the newspaper. Yeah. She like, or do we talk about the middle part mm. of the movie where it's the complete mm. opposite both. tone where it's taken Let's super go with seriously? Both. Yeah. At the start, like she does not see the baby as a, a member of the family. She sees it as a status symbol. Yeah, okay. I change my question. Which version of the mum is closest to your mum? Yeah. Rich bitch mum or sad bitch mum? <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna okay. say my mum's closer to sad bitch mum. Mm. Your mum, Peter? Yeah, I agree. Same. Sad bitch mum? Yeah. What about yours, Bartek? Yeah, with, Rich bitch mum. Oh, with I'm with the classic. point I was going to speak with, was more like, than one language. I mean, geez. Oh, of course. With the point that I was going to earlier, it was going to be she's like neither. But if when you change it to which one she more <laughs> like? Rich bitch mum. Uh, <laughs> no, I don't think so. I, I think I think sad bitch mum. Oh. We're all sad bitch mums. Um, here's something great about rich bitch mum. Uh, no, about Lara Flynn Boyle. Is she's an actress that. <laughs> sorry, sorry. <laughs> this guy. This he looks guy. like a human Muppet. Deputy Jolla. He's Jabba the Hutt. <laughs> he looks like a human Muppet. <laughs> I mean, on, he... on the phone, he was literally like, my, I'm Deputy John John Deputy. Or something. <laughs> 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 you you oh, heard that, right? Yeah. Amazing. So, um, the dad, this is where he comes into play. He gives money. No, what I love about Lara Flynn Boyle is she's one of those actresses that is just freckly as all hell, and mm. no matter how much makeup they put on her, they just can't they can't handle yeah, the freckles. Absolutely, and it's kind of refreshing to see an actress or an actor with freckles because mm. in movies, you know, you can make up that shit up that aren't playing characters that would have freckles like gingers or nerds or whatever. Mm. She's just a rich person. She's just a character and she happens to have freckles. I think the freckle community has been represented pretty well in her career. Yeah, I'm going to be honest. I actually really like a girl with freckles. I think it's a very endearing trait. You, you know, it's, it's, you know, you, it's very beautiful. Do you and- like girls with multiple children and she lives across the street from Dep Dep John and <laughs> Deputy John. John you know, you know what? When you're when you're dating someone, you take the good with the bad. I'm just gonna throw that out there. Hi. Oh, <laughs> that was adorable. Looks like a potato. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All babies and kids look. The that, same. That's not usually what they mean when they say I could just eat you up. Right. Um, did, you read, that, yeah. did you read the IMDb trivia about how she says um. You, then you don't know what it's like. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's like the two characters she says it to are uh, people who in real life actually have children, yeah. whereas she does not. She does not have children. My yeah. favourite part about this whole sequence is it answered a question that all of us were asking in the most brilliant ways, which mm. is, 
this woman says, you know, she's going to pray over and she's like, I do believe, what is it? Like, pretty much what she indicates is that there's a force, maybe God, maybe luck, that watches over all babies. Mm. And that answers the question of why doesn't this baby get hurt or die at any point? And then, what's his name? Fat Tony answers that question by going, what does this baby have? Baby luck? And I'm, you- gonna, I'm gonna bring something up really quickly. Sorry, Bartek. I'm just gonna. So, I'm, not, I'm, I'm guessing you guys are purveyors of movies. You would have seen the Harry Potter movies. Correct? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I've seen Harry do, Potter. Do you recall the point? I think it might have been the sixth or seventh movie when Harry comes upon a vial of liquid luck, and everything he does succeeds for a short amount of time. Yeah. yeah. That is the. That's the kind of feel that I got with this movie. That the baby could not have done anything. The wrong. darker side of baby luck in Harry Potter is it is actually from the spirits and sweat and blood of dead babies i mean that's where you yeah. get baby luck from it's from babies i mean they're dead they're not using it i mean they killed them for it good theories guys are you ready for the actual answer sure yeah go on because someone in a supplementary material to this movie so death of the altar yeah go on <laughs> has established what exactly it is aliens <laughs> oh, oh and Wait, can we take a guess guess who which organization it was that scientology is. steve buscemi you both have the first letter correct. It's an S. Stone cutters. Nope. Uh, is it a religion? Nope. Mm, organization. Uh, company. Smegma. Yes. It's a company. Sony. Nope. Mm. What kind of company? Sennheiser. Video game company. It's huh? Sega. Sega. Ooh. Sega have the answer. Oh, oh, you may. <laughs> I know the answer to this already. <laughs> oh, yeah. So, Bartek. Yes. Linked me a Sega video game video, like a. Video. It's a video game adaptation of this game. <sighs> and their what? interpretation of what? Okay, okay. Before you get into it, Bartek. Yes. Take a guess, Peter. Of in Baby's Day Out, who you play as? Do you play as the baby? No. no. Go on, Bartek. Why would you not? <laughs> Go on, Bartek, because this answers the question. All that we're talking about why the baby is safe. So the game is an escort mission. Oh, no. <laughs> Go on, Bartek. Oh. oh, by the way, the game was cancelled before it was released. But, but the, it's it, a tragedy. It exists tragedy. in ROMs. Go, go on, Bartek. You play as a guardian angel ghost spirit? Oh. So you look like... You know how they have those ghosts in Super Mario Brothers? You know, like... It looks like one of them, but with angel wings, and you're floating around, like, moving the baby from dangers and stuff like that. If you guys have played the really great DS game Ghost Trick Phantom Detective, it's it's something like that. You go around, you alter, you're a dead, you're a dead spirit Mm. in this game, but you can, like, alter the environment to, like, uh, save the people who are alive and stuff like that. So it's kind of like that. Brilliant. Well, you know what's really great? About that, these guys should be ghosts by this point in the movie. This okay, the, this giraffe that we just saw, uh, that was my tie for uh, second best character. Was giraffe seen for split second eating? Yes, because it's it's the most real uh... character. It's the most raw and animalistic. And this is when all of them got broken feet. Yeah, and they managed to still run. And then oh. Uh oh! No, they're dead. They they are straight up dead. Uh, okay, and worky. The difference in time between when they jumped in the hole and when they hit the bottom, they are dead. No, what, there's what, no. Question. We don't have sound. What was the? Difference it was this. In time? They jump and then. Uh, uh, that's at least five dude, stories. That's that's like three seconds, right? That's a long fall. Uh, yeah. <laughs> it's not as good as in the 1990s Captain America movie. Captain America punches a guy into like a uh, uh, um. Event that's going downwards, and this is it literally goes for like 20 seconds. <laughs> you just hear, ah! and it just keeps going, and you never hear him land. So, you imagine you went to the center of the earth. So, at what point do you have to like stop your screaming and pick up a bit of breath, like that Simpsons episode? I think in? when you fall, you're having a heart attack, so your screaming will Wait, be hold continuous. On. Wasn't there a thing in Bill and Ted's Bogus Journey? What? They had a really long fall, and then, like, partway through, they stopped. Mm. Started no, again. They had, like, you're conversation. thinking of Spy Kids 2, oh, in which they yeah. fall inside of a volcano yes. to meet Steve Buscemi, and it yes. goes on for two hours. Yeah, but that's, there's a reason for that. There's yeah, a canon, there, there was a canon explanation. No, it I was know. Bill and Ted 2. They were falling into hell. Oh, well... Uh, <laughs> as you do, as you do. You've like, seen I, the movie! I know, but I can't remember that... <laughs> that okay, look, they're here, fall- we go, here we're going. 
here we go. They're here falling in a really big abyss. They're like screaming like, ah, and it goes for a long time. Then they stop. They do it again. Then they <laughs> stop and they're like, dude, this is a really long fall or something like that. They're like so, lampshaded. We're up to the gorilla section, mm. which could be arguably the most iconic section of Baby's Day Out, considering yeah. I had never seen it before. I never known of its existence. Could I say something? <laughs> but the poster about, indicates. Could I say something about this too? So, I mentioned earlier that Oliver brought up that we should see this movie. My name's Peter, but okay. Yeah, yeah. I don't know who Oliver is. Ollie, Peter, Ver, whatever. Um, so, yeah, Jennifer told you. Yes, Jennifer told me. And this was almost a month ago. <laughs> yeah. And since he brought up this specific movie, even uh, though, even though as he's established, Oliver has established, mm-hmm. that Three Ninjas might have been more appropriate for him, mm. we went with this one. So... It, and something happened... Yeah, between... yeah, yeah. <laughs> There's your favourite character. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Something happened between him recommending <laughs> this movie and us doing this show and watching the movie. Mm. Oh, 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 yes! Yes, I know what this is, which was the gorilla. Yes, a child <laughs> in a gorilla enclosure. Ah, oh, yes! The child in the gorilla enclosure and the zookeeper's shot and killed the gorilla. Yes. And it's a big controversy. Mm. I said to my girlfriend... When watching this, I said, "So, how long do you think till they uh, shoot the gorilla?" And then she's like, "Well, that was, that, I knew you were going to make that joke." I'm like, "Joke? No, that was a genuine statement." This that that is true to life, and that gorilla is straight up dead. Mm-hmm. Straight so up dead. clearly, the guardian angel is real. It told Oliver <laughs> to do that. We should do this movie, and to- then that happened. It was like a it was like a warning. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I just laughed. He goes. Why do I have to do it? Because you got long arms. So guy from Matrix puts his hands in his pockets to show that he has short arms. Yeah. Oh, oh look how he's copying him. This is like Michelangelo's, you know, fucking yeah. sister. It's like <laughs> sister's <laughs> chapel. Could you please oh, get a friend yes. who has, like, they've done that. He's grabbing the baby shoelace. There's a gorilla and there's mm. just him. It's done heavenly. I love how the gorilla just, like, puts it on so there. It doesn't even, like, do okay. anything. So, Ryan, are you going to replace... Uh, was it Adam who's in that painting? Yeah, like with... Adam with this guy, and then God with the gorilla, and but, well, and the baby's the, there. There's like yeah. a shoelace between their fingers. The baby's <laughs> just hanging out. He's just the like... baby's just like a cherub, <laughs> an added cherub. My favorite thing about this section is the movie advertisements really highlight this section with the uh, posters being the baby on the gr- on top of the gorilla, which yeah. we never see. Yeah. But here's something that I really like. Another theory to something that happens is the post on IMDb is the baby on a wrecking ball which yeah. never happens oh yeah there isn't even a wrecking ball no here's something okay I know you're asking Bartek Ryan at what point did you realise the baby wasn't gonna grow in size I'll tell you. <laughs> It was this scene right here. Yeah. Cuz I said if a baby was going to grow huge at any point, it would be when there was a gorilla. Yeah. And it didn't happen. Yeah, this is about the halfway point of the movie because <laughs> I remember this is at the point where you on Facebook asked me, "Are you watching the movie yet?" And my response was like, "Well, this it, this is certainly something. It's very topical." And this guy's ah. hand is straight up broken by the way. And it's, he does do yeah. he does he does play that out for the rest of the movie. Yeah. Well, you know, sometimes it's easy to critique he comes a, back to it. Yeah, no, that's what I mean. Sometimes it's easy to critique a movie on continuity errors and failures. This movie actually does Mm. take a lot of effort, such as, you know, my girlfriend is a bit more cynical, you know, not as aware of these unappreciated ones as in the same vein that I am. She was like, well, Fat Tony's pants are perfectly fine after they got set on fire, but if you actually look carefully, they're torn. Yeah. So this movie takes the extra effort. I mean, this gorilla, look at that. Look at that. I believe it's a gorilla. You know what? A lot of modern movies and TV shows, uh, you're right, they, they don't have that same attention to detail. I, I've been watching recently um, the 24 series. Classic yeah, series. That, that, that's a series that's built upon like continuity of no time passing the three ne- between episodes. There are a few seasons where people get like shot in the neck and the body, and a few episodes later, it's like it never happened, and it's uh, absolutely yeah. an insult to the audience. And no. I'm so glad that this movie has stayed true to form. And you know what's great about this whole scene is just Fat Tony's <laughs> idea is to I'm a banana. I'm a, I'm a banana. <laughs> Could we just get that as a soundbite? Just remix it into a song? I think you have to just take the screen cap of him going like, eh. <laughs> and it's just like, <laughs> and Photoshop him as a banana. I will say no, that. No, get a Photoshop of his face on a banana and then his arms coming out of the banana. He's like, I'm a banana. Get the guy from the peanut butter jelly time and just like. <laughs> peanut butter banana. Okay, so wait, wait. Okay, so he rips the baby off, bad monkey, and then the and then smack. Oh, in the Whoa. nuts. 
This is many times is that nuts. the third one of the movie? I think so. Third or fourth. We did stop counting. Yeah. Actually. But I wrote them down in my notes. So, so we didn't actually choose if we had a favourite section of the movie. It is very hard to pin down, but I'm going to go, go honest with you. For sheer ludicrous nature mm-hmm. and happenstance, the best one is... When Fat Tony is in the park with the baby between his legs. Yes. Mm. I oh, really... Small talk cops? Yeah. Here's the... Th- <laughs> small talk cops. <laughs> a lot of the time when I was writing notes for this, I kept writing one word and one word repeatedly, other than the word dead, <laughs> which was art. If this kind of lends weight to that whole guardian angel thing where, mm. you know... The Sega it, game really did nail it. <laughs> potentially, how do we know that all the characters aren't already dead and that this isn't just an afterlife alternate and universe. And Haley we- Joel Osment is the only one who can see he, them. Yeah, no, a closed universe, man. It, leading back to that, it's, it's all part of one And one it's the same universe as Stuart Little. I mean, jeez. Because, you know, the kid from Stuart Little, he also grew up to be uh, fucking ripped. What is with that? It's so unfair. It's clearly because I got self-esteem issues. <laughs> Duh. Or oh, they man. just knew that we would want to have sex with them. I mean, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you're like let's go less so from the kid from Stuart Little because he was a kid, not a baby. But yeah, I mean, uh, or I mean, if you're gonna choose between a kid and a mouse, I you, no, well, not the mouse. <laughs> I love how this. I said that. <laughs> <laughs> the mouse is voiced for Michael J. Fox. So yeah, I'll do that. I love how this is a show <laughs> where way back when we watched um, Bend It Like Beckham, <laughs> we were talking about uh, how. Then sixteen year old Kira Knightley, like how, what? How tra- <laughs> like uh, attraction, what you'd want to like uh, And you 16. guys were she was sixteen and you it guys wasn't were like, me. It wasn't me. You guys were like, You can't you shouldn't feel sexually attracted to her and I'm like, but I'm sorry, she's so hot. Yeah, I said something like, Is it wrong to feel attracted to her like as yeah. she is here because right now she's not that person? The guest then said like yes. And now we're talking about yeah, this, this, this is the same thing with the would you fuck the baby thing. Yeah. Yes, yeah, well, I mean uh, guy, there's uh, the yeah. testicles of the fucking orangutan. Can I just say this guy, Fat Tony, in the bars, straight up dead. He's in the state of rigor mortis right now. His body's no, frozen up. He's he is just dead. can't walk. Because he's dead. When you when you're dead, you can't walk. It it yeah. Fun fact: When you're dead, you can't walk. <laughs> Put that on a corner. <laughs> Put that on a poster. Baby's day out. Fun fact: When you're dead, you can't I like, walk. I like how the orangutan didn't escape. No, the orangutan's yeah. too playful. Look at him. He's just like I was in Lancelot Link. Yeah. Have you watched Lancelot Link? No. It's a mo- <laughs> it's a TV show where the main character was Lancelot. All the characters were chimps, and you know the real life mm-hmm. chimps, and they dress them up, and it's a spy show called Lancelot Link, and obviously like they put peanut butter on their lips and Aww. make them talk and all that. And it's just like, what happens if it was James Bond, but all of them were monkeys? That is the best idea. Yeah, they get chimps and orangutans and put them in dresses and have them as his love interest. And they do like serious camera angles. And it's just like, you see like they're about to kiss and it's zoomed up on like an orangutan just going, (laughs) like they do. And it's just like, I need this in my life. And Lancelot Link, the love interest, she speaks, she speaks like this. And she's just like, oh, Lancelot. Oh, and it's just the best thing ever. Be still my beating heart. Be still my beating erection because... <laughs> Don't say that when kids are on screen! <laughs> no. I mean, the one, that's the, the rest one. of the movie. But this is like the one scene where an adult notices the baby. And yeah. <laughs> and, the only recollect- and the only recognition is the woman just nods. <laughs> <laughs> She's like, well, guess there's a baby there. No, looks at the woman. The kid's like, she's like, "Who's you? Where's your mummy?" And then looks over to the woman. She just they just both mm. nod. And they're like that woman's like obviously reading a book, and she's like, "Oh, this yeah. woman's saying, hey, hey, oh, so he is the both, dad." They both think, yeah, the baby is the other woman's. Do you think they fired the butler at some point because he fucked up? And maybe that's why we don't... Maybe that scene's missing in which she fired the butler. No, she's down in the back cave, remember? We were talking about... Oh, yeah, Alfred, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, And he's all like, Master, where I got fired from my dear job? Mm, Some men. Just like the watch the world burn. (laughs) (laughs) Maybe Baker's got the lighter from the next scene. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, the irony. The Ah, baby's in the paper. Irony. Sorry, was that that the front page? You know what? I'm I'm amazed that they managed to print this baby's picture on the same day that he was taken. On the same... It's one day. It's literally been... 
in like three hours. I'm telling you, this movie takes place in a year. It's amazing. And like this woman has her own baby. And he's mm. just like, come on, lady. Ugh. Like, I get the news story. That's fair enough. But we have like words on print, right? Mm. Of this baby's... Picture in the paper, it's amazing. The mum did mention earlier, like, <laughs> that even if the baby, you know, did get in the paper, it wouldn't be on the front page. And now it's on the front and page. And now not only is it in the paper, it's on the front page. Got a good point. So, they're van. <laughs> oh my god. Yes, Ryan? <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't it, you don't even need to say anything, man. It's just... The van has a little glass... <laughs> Dome. I don't know about you, <laughs> but I kind of want that. I kind of I do. Kind of want so, that. what's his purpose for doing what he's doing? I don't understand. I tell you what, one of us will get a van, we'll put that on the van, you jump up, you look through it, you tell me you're not having fun. I <laughs> like, I won't believe you. Uh, if, if only we're hunting down a baby. <laughs> right. If, if the dome wasn't there, then, you know, rain would get in and the wind would hit you. So, I you like, need the dome. Uh, like, yeah, you need a dome. I, I love that the cops. Love the car, the, the van. It's like the shit. It's it's van. a piece of shit. Yeah, absolutely. It's so shit. It's got like hordes in the front. <laughs> Look at this. The baby is super quick. He crawls away, and this guy just cannot catch up. It's amazing. can I bring up a serious issue that may shift the tone? Is it a Roger Ebert level serious issue? Are you gonna bring up pedophilia again? No, no. That tone has never been shifted. Um, <laughs> we, no. This is a serious topic. Uh, in, in a movie like this, there's certain conventions certain cliches that you do expect and obviously this movie does meet them at certain points but there is one that i really do want to bring up and it is dead serious so take a breath guys i'll have some water this movie doesn't have a poop joke oh my god think about it oh it's my god really early on is oh, no, 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 in, no. The, in the nursery they're like oh do you have a surprise for me in there yeah and it just smiles oh. but there is no actual poop joke like that's not a real poop joke that's an indication of a poop joke but poop jokes in these movies are like oh no i have to change his nappy and oh poops on my fingers or like that's oh, amazing, oh. Actually. there's no wee jokes there's no toilet jokes in this movie in a movie that is aimed towards kids and you would expect that and there's big movies Bigger, better movies that do poop jokes and wee Did jokes. You? And, like, I'm there's sorry, Will you, Ferrell. Yeah. Look, here's what I'm saying. Yeah. Here's why I'm th- saying it's serious. What is wrong with the modern comedy landscape where you have a movie with professionals like Ben Stiller and Owen Wilson and Will Ferrell and Kevin Hart where their movies that are rated M to MA have to do wee and poop jokes when a movie that is aimed towards kids where the main character is a small baby doesn't have poop jokes? I, I'm just yeah. saying this movie is a lot classier than Roger Ebert gave it credit for. I gotta tell you, man, it's all it's all down to that, this being the best movie of all time. And you can't really contest it. This movie rises above that level of toilet humour. Literal toilet humour, in that case. Yeah, really, the scenes where that would happen, because that, let's just say that's a convention of, like, the, oh, people looking after a baby when they're not qualified to do that, whereas this is, like, a movie where they're chasing a baby. Yeah, but, yeah, yeah no point does a baby poop on them, or, like, hmm. you know, somebody... that, That's what I'm saying. I'm saying, building off of what Oliver said... The time for where that could possibly be fit in has passed. Mm. I really just want to upload this whole scene onto our page and just write the word brilliance because (laughs) there's no way to describe it. I mean, look, this scene, we get scenes, Jennifer, in which... Thank you. (laughs) All right, I didn't know you got a sex change. Uh, Jennifer, (laughs) in which... They're so magnificent. There's so many elements, isn't that right, Bartek? Where we can't say anything more than just a single phrase, such as perfect, brilliant, well done, or a, or a word that is similar to phrase. There's no because on the on the page you tip, you sometimes upload a frame from the movie that like encapsulates the idea. Like usually mm. it's a facial expression or yeah. something. But this. You need a lot of things to encapsulate the whole thing. You can't just have their reactions like, oh, they're doing a funny mm. face. You don't know that there's you know, fire there. Or I if you show that. that there's a this lighter, it's like, what, what, is, what, what is this dark area? I think uh, what you said before, I think the word well done is especially relevant. Yeah, uh, like his testicles are well done. <laughs> Here's something that I really thought was... Because he's be- being cooked. Yes. Here's something I really thought was going to happen. Now, back to pedophilia. Yep. Uh, (laughs) Serious time's over. Serious time's over. Fun time has begun. Um, No. Back to sexualization. This scene here. See this? 
Mm. I thought the cops were going to arrest him for jerking off in the park. <laughs> you know what? If you came because up because in some park, kids yeah, movies be like do have inappropriate things like this, and they have for the adults. I really thought that the cops were going to think that he was wanking or jerking off underneath this coat, mm. but they just take it. They don't even question it. They mm. don't even go, "What's wrong, fella?" or like, "Are you okay?" They're just like, "Oh, this is weird." Can I also point out? This baby is especially talented. I'm going to be honest. The first time I held a lighter in my hand... Um, Which was yesterday? Ago, <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> what was that, love? <laughs> I'm, not, right, you I'm not 12. That um, was a laugh that said you're too on the nose. <laughs> <laughs> it was when, this morning. <laughs> if you know, okay, if you don't know how to use a lighter, especially one like that, they can be particularly difficult the first time you hold it. To, to get the flame working. I mean, you gotta you got to flick it in the right way. you got to light it. This baby does it immediately in the dark with his mm. tiny little fingers. Oh. And I'm just, like, in awe. In the dark, but to be fair, he does have a light. <laughs> yeah. I mean, after... <laughs> <laughs> you know, I think it's kind of good that we stopped the, uh, you know, the nut jokes. Because I just realised this one has a lot of, like... How do you count it? Yeah, I mean, mm. how do we... Is it just one? This one? Continuous You nut? count them in pairs, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> that was good. <laughs> also with the pedophilia thing, there is a lot of baby grabbing a grown Dicks. man's nuts yeah. in this. But Willingly not... grabbing, yeah. might I add. But it's not really overtly sexual in nature, so... Mm. Well, no. So I can see Not why... they're jerking off in the park. So I can, yeah. s- I can see why it didn't become a controversial thing, because it... it... Well, the oh. 90s was a PC time, so... Mm. My favourite thing is the janitor from Scrubs is obviously the cop here, but I really do like that he sniffs, <laughs> and he goes something about, like, yeah, barbecues, eh? Huh? <laughs> the Christmas Carol chestnuts roasting on, op- on an open fire just came to mind when they were yeah, talking about I that. Yeah, I love and, like, Fat Tony's face in this. We're used to Fat Tony as a voice actor. Great mm. voice. That's his real voice, pretty much. He's just putting on a bit more of an Italiano thing. Mm. But he's a great, great physical actor. Like, look at this. He's... <laughs> no. Look at his face. He's really emoting what it would be like to have your testicles on fire. And I really like him as a performer. He's got a real gravitas to him, which I think carries out because his character's called Eddie in this movie. Mm-hmm. And I feel like all characters called Eddie in any movie so far have been wonderful, fully fleshed out characters. And I feel like Eddie is the only smart person in a world full of idiots. Mm. Isn't that right, Bartek? Yeah, and the the kind of irony behind that is that he also is sort an of idiot. an idiot too. My favorite, but th- of the whole bunch. <laughs> yeah, this is my favorite section of the movie, as right. I mentioned. But the best part was I said to my girlfriend, "Oh, so help me God, if they stomp out the fire." Man, I've said it once. I've said <laughs> it a thousand times. I've, I've said it once. I've said it a thousand times. All good movies have a crotch stomp. Yeah, and I like. You got you to admit it. Boom, <laughs> boom. How funny would this be if you, like, use CGI to get rid of the fire? <laughs> the whole thing. And I said to my housemate, my housemate who hadn't watched it, I explained the scene, he goes, surely there's a better way out, better way of putting out the fire. It's like, no, because if he rolls, he's going to set all of these chips and leaves on fire. Oh, bark. Yeah. Potentially. No, it would, definitely, because, hmm. you know, that's going to happen. And then there's no water in sight. They tried to fan it out. The best option was for him to get his dick stomped. You can smother it. Oh, you like, can potentially you, wait, you toasted yeah, you marshmallows can... over a yeah. pile of flaming I mean, gonads. gonads. Oh. That, there's three lines in this movie that sum up the movie. That, mm. uh, uh, I guess babies are more dangerous than we thought. Yeah. Yeah. And the classic line. Now, Bartek, I think you, I think, I hope that you agree that it's probably the best line in the movie because it's delivered with sincerity and a serious gravitas, which is the detective says... Well, he says something like, uh, 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 well, come on, boys, we got to turn around. we got to go to the big TikTok to grab the boo-boo, get back up. <laughs> <laughs> you remember that? Honestly, I can't, we I can't think go of We've got to go to the man. big TikTok to get the boo-boo, get back up. I cannot think of a better way to say that specific instruction. And you know what's, and, yeah. you know what's great? If you give that line to someone out of context, they're going to think, You're crazy. man, that is the fucking stupidest thing you've ever said. Mm. But in the context of this movie, true R word. It, it's art. It's true art. <laughs> so arty. Oh, yeah. She had a pretty freckly chest. She's freckly all over. Yeah. She's she's a freckle monster. Do I smell character development? Do I smell freckles? <laughs> <laughs> Probably not. 
<laughs> Jennifer, don't judge me. <laughs> I have, a, you know, how people have enhanced senses when they've lost another sense. Yeah, I've yeah. lost the sense of common, uh, and <laughs> <laughs> so I've gained super smell. Uh, I can smell a girl's freckles from a film a mile away. That is. Some, that's like some daredevil level of just enhancement. What, you mean being blind and being able to see? <laughs> he sees kind of like a bat, doesn't he? Like through like Batman. Echo location. It's yeah. nothing like Batman. Well, back, but no, there is a Batman the Michael Keaton movie where he uses echo location. Yeah. Also the Christian Bale ones. Anyway. This whole time, you know, the, the nanny kind of... She's from Sex and the City? Go on. No, no, no. She... Really? Well, I, don't, I, I wouldn't have known that because my point here is that she, <laughs> she kept reminding me of someone and I just couldn't put my finger on who it was. And I've just realised, I think I know who she reminds me of, and it's... Can I take a guess? Before you do, it's it's building upon this idea that another force had influenced Oliver to make us watch this movie. Oh, okay, no, mm. I'm not going to guess it. But she does remind me, especially in this scene, of Nurse Ratchet from <laughs> One Flew of the Cuckoo's Nest. Uh. <laughs> do go on, Bartok. This guy's realistic, by the way. He's, like, straight up. She reminds, That's my dad. She reminds <laughs> me of... Well, that was who I was my first guess of your favourite character. <laughs> she reminds me of the character Nancy from the movie Oliver. Oh! Uh, too bad we don't have a guest called Oliver. That, you know, you joke about that being a play, being a uh, movie and all that. It's my life. Um, yeah, I, I know it annoys you, yeah. but... Want some more, sir? I, yeah, you know, I, I, he, I, it really annoys him because he wishes there was a movie called Jennifer. <laughs> <laughs> All my life I've wanted more, and uh, now I'm on the podcast cause I, <laughs> because I demanded more. And he I, wants I more. So here's the climax scene. It begins. This yeah. is the scene in which basically it's 15 minutes of me writing dead, 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 yep, dead, yep. dead, mm. dead, 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 fired, yes, dead, fired, fired, <laughs> fired, dead, dead, fired, unemployed, fired, gross negligence, sued, lawsuit, lawsuit, dead, lawsuit. dead, 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 dead. Cool transition that from is, night to, I, from day to night. This is cool. The uh, Roger Ebert is, hated that, I bet. Roger Ebert hates everything that's great. Like, such as, hey, Roger Ebert, okay, you know what? You ask me stuff that I like, and I'll be Roger Ebert, and I'll answer it for you. Okay. I really like puppies. Puppies? What are you, crazy? <laughs> <laughs> Thumbs down. <laughs> Thumbs down. Ryan. I don't know who Ryan is. Ryan, your favourite movie is Big Fat Liar, right? Oh, I love Big Fat Liar. I'm Roger Ebert. Thumbs up. <laughs> but wait, ask me more. Roger, do you like sunshines? Sunshine and rainbows. Thumbs down. But what else do you like? Pedophilia. Thumbs up. <laughs> but then why do you like Big Baby's Day Out? Or Baby's Big Day Out. Because it was fun. Bum down. <laughs> hey, no, excuse me. I've got a turn in my grave. Hey, Rod- <laughs> hey Roger. Hey, What do you think of that that TV show where that Siskel guy and his friend review movies? Thumbs up for the fat guy. Thumbs down for the skinny guy. <laughs> <laughs> um. So way way earlier, you mentioned the whole uh, man thing of when you see a a crutch. Get being hurt. impaled by you know whatever. I don't remember Roger Ebert bringing that up earlier in the episode, but. Mm. Go on. <laughs> sorry, <laughs> sorry, Roger. I was talking to Ryan. Ah, Ryan, thumbs up. Bartek, like, ah. thumbs down. Jennifer, uh, let me see in the mirror. I like them. <laughs> let me watch the movie first. Yeah. Um, Go on. You're saying nut shots. Wow. Yeah. Look at that green screen. I didn't. No, that's real. I didn't have it so much. <laughs> I didn't have it so much from the nut shots, but in the scene, it's the heights mm. kind of. You're scared thing. of heights. I don't think I am, but when because I would be fine if there was like you know guardrails like. Give me an example of what made you go ooh. All of the times where the camera looked down or a character who clearly was afraid of the heights was falling down. Mm, that, because because mm. up there, there wasn't so much, you know, protection, like guardrail kind mm. of things there. I, I am fine with heights if there is that kind of protection thing. If but there isn't and the only thing stopping me from falling is the fact that no one's being a dick and, like, pushing me, that would be... The like, thing. Eddie that's pushes... Vertigo, like Eddie that, vertigo, yes. Yeah, vertigo. Um, here's the best part. Is that what it's called, vertigo? Yeah, it's, it's that vertigo. feeling when you're like, oh. Yeah, it's yeah. that feeling of an Alfred Hitchcock movie with... Jimmy Stewart. Um, no, here's the thing about this. I had a full body experience with this, which was oh. from full head, body or out of full earth? body, yeah. where from head to toe, my whole body just went, whoa! Like, it kind of, my, I kind of jerked out of the chair going, oh, which was when Guy from Memento gets pushed or he falls off the building 
And it's not when he gets hit in the nuts, but when he lands face first, like yes. body first on the pylon of wood or whatever yes. it is, and he's just knocked out for no, like a solid he's, no, he's couple dead. of minutes. And I'm like, holy shit, did they, they just kill him? His sternum is collapsed, his internal His face, are his jaw, nose, everything broken. He is absolutely... Okay, yeah, he's... he's this gone. whole sequence, again, is a sequence in which if you said to me, Ryan, here's the pitch for seven movies mm. and it was just a synopsis of this one scene i'll be like that sounds like a great seven movies like because this sequence alone has so many things happening that alone you could make a, a movie about this whole construction mm. set sequence and it would go for three and a half hours and it rivals the epicness of ben-hur have you seen the movie <clears throat> Unbreakable with Bruce Willis? Of course. I truly believe that these three guys were meant to be in that movie. They wandered into the wrong set. <sighs> scene after scene, they refused to die. They refused to show mm. signs of mortal injury. It, it was a, it's a clear we mistake. never saw if their weakness was water. We so. never saw that. We never saw it. Mm. You know, another did. thing that you <laughs> asked earlier on in the movie was... Um, the perception of what you thought the movie was going to be. You know, you thought it was going to be, you know, Baby Grows Giant. <laughs> With me, I said that I was a bit more vague on my understanding of it. I didn't really know what it was going on. So when the baby escaped through the window and climbed up the stairs, I was like, oh, okay, they're going to be chasing it and getting it back. Like, I, I caught on there. And the first thing I thought of was there was an old Popeye the Sailor Man cartoon where um, mm. Olive Oil was sleepwalking and she was walking across, like, the construction sites and all this stuff, and Popeye, and I think Bluto might have been there, but Popeye, at least, he was, like, freaking out trying to get her back and nothing was waking her up. Nothing. She was not in danger at all. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of what the movie was reminding me of. That's great. That's mm. great stuff. That makes me very happy, Bartek. Um. Very happy that he mentioned that. Hold on to this recollection of me being happy for later on in the episode. Oh my god. <laughs> there is a scene coming up, actually, and it's the only moment that truly, really terrified me in a very real sense, and I'll mention it when we get to it. Was but it... it struck a chord with me in a way that no other scene in the movie has. I will bring it up in a little bit. Wow. It's about okay. maybe five, ten minutes in the future. Wow, okay. this is scary. <laughs> I'm, I'm guessing what it is. Could it be, like... Good night, Donald. I mean, who knows? Yeah, where it could I'm be. You know fearful what? of human interaction, so that that conversation actually. Yeah. Look at him. He just thrived. right now, guy who I don't think we've come up with a name for is hanging on for dear life. Yeah, Mars attacks. Body Mars guy. attacks. Yeah, Mars attacks. Okay, Mars attacks guy. Um, <laughs> I'm Clint Eastwood. Son. You've got Clint Eastwood's fun in Gran Torino. You've got to imagine that <laughs> not only is his grip slipping, he also got like. Bashed by yes. a gorilla. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. He's probably in a lot of pain. Uh, you know point. who's in more pain? The guy who had his testicles set on fire. Oh, yeah. wow. Because he would be suffering third degree you burns. See, you can see right there, his pant legs are, are torn. actually torn. It's, the the it's effort the put into this movie. And think, those those underpants would have melted onto his crotch. Yes. Oh, fuck. You know what? Fuck, you, you yes, get, indeed. You wouldn't yeah. be able to because you couldn't get to his dick. You get attention to detail like that, and Transformers <laughs> can't even shut the car they door. Do, they do make that joke later on, Ryan, yeah. They do make yeah. that joke later on. <laughs> yeah. I forgot that. Um, and he falls. And, oh, here comes Boom. I like oh, yep. the fact that... Whoa, look at how many boom. stories that is. That's oh. at least like five, ten stories. Yeah, yeah. That's, where, that's where my anus was really puckered. Yeah, no, he's dead. Your puckered anus was really when you saw the baby's butt earlier on. I know you, but This so. is a classic. Rolling over. <laughs> and that got me. Fat Tony. Fat Tony just... Sorry, was that the thing that resonated with no, you? No, no, it's um, it's yeah. Oh, later, oh, he'll oh, he'll yeah. get to it. He'll make a big spiel about it. Jennifer will. <laughs> so, but he said that got you me. Know so me. me. I know Jennifer <laughs> like the back of my hand. You don't know your back of your hand very well. <laughs> I know Jennifer very well. <laughs> yeah, you've known him for like two hours, fifteen minutes. <laughs> hey, I don't know. I don't know. I've known another person for that amount of time. I told you. Peter met me on the street and told me that Jennifer wanted to watch this movie halfway through. I have oh, no continuity. That's also my name. <laughs> <laughs> that's not my name uh, so his hat hasn't fallen off too oh no God. it's cause he's got a big head and a little hat that's so it amazing. stays on and oh here he goes yep. off again and dead again oh, oh, oh nuts nut joke nut joke nuts and oh I've always wanted him that close now imagine if, if this was yeah. in 3D 3D he would he come straight 3D or 4D I like how these guys are having casual conversations yeah. like yeah, yeah yeah so we're getting fired the guy on the right like he really was Mm. He looked like he was blissful. Yeah. He was satisfied with his job choice. Either he was, like, having a good day, 
or he really likes the guy he was talking Ser- to. Yeah. Serious question, bro. When you're riding on a, a, a lift like this, yes, are you please. facing towards the city or towards the building? Well, you might face towards the city if you want a nice view. Yeah, but what I, are you? I feel like prime by default, I would be staring towards the building, but I would look at the city every yeah. now and then. Yeah. I like how he falls straight onto it. It doesn't shake the lift this or bo- make a noise, okay. and he <clears throat> looks like he's just <clears throat> shat himself. You know, this this bothered me because earlier in the earlier in the scene, the baby slid onto the top of the of the uh, the lift, and they noticed that. Yet mm. this guy falls from several stories up, and they don't notice it. No, it's because he's majestic. They don't Mm. sense his guardian angel because he probably doesn't have one. My spine. (laughs) What? He (laughs) said... That's what he said. He goes, Ah, my spine. Yeah. And then this is the bit in which he's now paralyzed, but then he gets smacked in the head and then he's concussed. Yeah. He he fell straight on his back, so his spine was, Mm. like, actually broken, but that actually set it back. There's a sensational part of this movie in which John Hughes famous writer, director, seminal creator of content of the 80s and 90s. This is during the later part of his career, Bartek, in which he wrote down Baby's Day Out. Mm. You know what? That's great. Claps his hands and goes, I'm going to make a trilogy of baby movies, which was this... What was the other one? Like Miracle on 37th Street... And mm. Home Alone 3, in which he's going to do a kid's 37 trilogy. 37 or 34? Yes. 34th, I can't remember. You know, that's why I asked. What one was I it? I think 34th. 34th. He mm. did a series of kidsy films. Did you notice that building that was in the background? <laughs> it looked like he was in India or <laughs> Egypt. <laughs> Foreshadowing for next movie. He survived falling into a, a dumpster full of metal. No, he didn't. He's dead. Yeah, this, yeah. yeah this whole construction sequence when they're falling, what it's is, like... Is that paint? Yeah, obviously. No, it's, it's cum. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right, we're there. We're oh, there. so something... It took, it took us the movies, so, but we're there. So something... What? what? Wait, wait, Bartek. We're finally at the cum stage, but it was so much quicker and easier to get to the baby fucking stage. <laughs> That's all on you, Ryan. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, spit and polish. Spit and polish. Where we oh, bring you we haven't mentioned... Baby rape. Ryan, I forgot to tell you, Oliver actually is part polish. Yeah, I'm a quarter polish. Shit, that's like the yes. closest we're gonna I get. Was, I was waiting till the end to drop the bomb. Drop oh, really? the pole the bomb. Pole bomb. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds dirty. <laughs> that sounds like a gay bar. <laughs> it sounds like someone who would have sex with a baby. So as we've established <laughs> that these construction workers literally do come buckets. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Here we go. <laughs> buckets mean the amount, not the actual buckets. <laughs> that would be amazing. And again, <laughs> this guy gets covered in cum. <laughs> it's really it's like yellowy. Orangey, orangey, orangey yellowy kind of cream, well, it's cream a, color. It's a few days old. <laughs> Is that what it looks like? <laughs> well, <laughs> obviously you haven't lived. Have you ever, if you look at a building, you're like, wow, this thing's huge. I'm surprised it's not falling over. It's because they use glue. Mm. Oh. <laughs> yeah, I was asking, why do they have glue? So, I so know, much glue. I know absolutely nothing about construction and it makes complete sense. As someone who knows nothing about construction, let me tell you something about construction, Jennifer. Most buildings are put together either in the style of Lego blocks or in the style of miniatures, where you have to glue the pieces together. <laughs> I'll tell you what, I'm pretty good at Tetris, so I think I could just walk onto a building site and just jump into a job. I'm going to be yeah, honest. Yeah, that's, that's pretty good. He said something about 10 inches of guile? Yeah. What's guile? This is... A, okay, um, this is something that you, you brought up, like, length, right? 10 inches. Um, They consistently <laughs> changed the length of the baby. When he was, like, poking his head onto the bus, he said, have you seen a baby about two feet tall? Firstly... That baby's not two feet. No, it may be for like standing. a short person's yeah. like four feet. And so. f- for the record, a single ruler length is usually twelve inches or one foot or thirty centimeters. Yeah, this baby's more than that. So they they've changed. Yeah, exactly. They've changed the length of the baby completely throughout the movie. Um, that's the only real flaw that I can find. You're not going to answer Bartek's impressive question, which is what is guile? No, yeah, no. That, that it's that it's that a guy from good. Street Fighter. Yeah, I know that, <laughs> but it was in low, it was ten, a lowercase g. No, no, no. He has ten inches of guy from. <laughs> <laughs> Fighter in him. <laughs> which is again, <laughs> which is <laughs> sexual yet again. He has 10 inches of him in this there. movie. The big American hero himself. guy. <laughs> <laughs> so, this is the part that I really lost faith in Tony's ability to capture the kid, which was he thought it'd be a really great idea to jump onto. Mm. And then it is like five o'clock, and you do realize that this movie has taken place in a day. Yeah. To be fair, at this little bit right here, 
he kind of has lost faith in himself too. Yeah. I've lost faith in myself as well. I think it's <laughs> after watching. But the movie. But that's just because of life. So oh. you see yourself. You s- so you see yourself as Eddie. Yeah, I'm Eddie in this picture. Who are you? In this, Jennifer? I'm, I'm that Paul on the right. Um, I was on No, you're not yeah. Polish enough to be that. Oh, uh, shit. Bartek? Oh. You know, correct me if I'm wrong, but... You're w- wrong. Would I be my favourite character? Which is, again... The, the veteran The veteran? Guy? No, you, might, really? you wouldn't be the veteran. Clearly, you're the baby girl that was in the pram above mm. the baby when he escaped from the daycare centre. Keep in mind, this was made in, ni- <laughs> this was made in 1994. Because you'd be a baby. But aren't I a really happy, jolly fellow? That baby was happy and jolly. Can I just say it? <laughs> as I was alluding to before... <laughs> Wait, just hold on. Hang on. Bartek is either a baby or an elderly man. There's no in-between option for him. <laughs> Go on, you were saying, is this is this the part that's your favourite? This is the section that absolutely terrified me, and I'm going to go into a little bit of detail as to why. Because firstly, the guy's an idiot for getting on the, the contraption in the first place. Really? He is stuck up there... And no one seems to know, or in that case, he's, he's been yelling, no one seems to care. Yeah. Which means that even if he was to let someone know, he is stuck. In it, Okay, you might think, why doesn't he just swing on it? Mm. He's covered in that goo, Ooh. which means that if he Slips. attempted... Yeah, he's straight dead. If he falls down, he's stuck up there with no way to move himself forward and back. And... Mm. In no situation in the movie like that before. <laughs> this, 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 this fucking guy. This fucking guy. <laughs> what? I'm so people grew around the corner. <laughs> <laughs> Good night. <laughs> <laughs> fucking Donald. Okay, you know what I'm saying? This man is running for president, ladies and gentlemen. Um, no, it's a sleeping guy. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, what? I'm president? <laughs> Who died? <laughs> well, Muslims, well. <laughs> All right, Oliver's got a point to make. I kind of made my point, I guess. Like uh, th- uh, this shot is cinematic. I love this. It reminds me of Apocalypse Now. Yeah. Uh, very much so. You know what I thought you were gonna go with? It scared you because you had a similar experience in which you were trying to kidnap a uh, yeah, baby. No, for real. I actually do have a, um, I do have a minor fear of heights. So the yeah. thought of that not being able to move and being helpless. Yeah, you know what's a really yeah. great part of this movie? No, but like, I know it, you're pointing. It. You're pointing. This is when the writing comes into full strength. How does he get off the hook, I hear you ask? Mm. The good question, that is, but we don't see it. All we hear is, I've got an idea. And then there are, he's off the hook, and he's no longer covered in concrete. He's no longer covered in goo. Yeah. Hey, yeah. Uh, it's like, hey, yeah. I thought, no. You know what I thought was going to happen? I thought they were going to be like, we're going to go. Like, I thought they were like, we're done. Because they were indicating that they've been done by this point. Mm. But no, they stick together. Just hang on. Hang on, we'll come we'll up. Come up got... saying, I got an idea. <coughs> and then, literally, yeah, yeah. it's free. See, I'm, I'm a little kind of, like, questioning, uh, questionable about this. Um, this scene where he suddenly, like, turns up at the veteran's home. But there's no, like, in-between between the yeah, construction Yeah, like, site. how did he get there? Because that's, a, like, they're not close by. The veteran's home looked like it was... It was really far away. Yeah. Here's the thing. The, this is when the movie turned from sheer happenstance to magical realism. I think you can t- kind of tell that the screenwriters kind of stopped caring at this point as well. Whoa, whoa, what are you talking about? This is a piece of art. Contemporary modernist art. This writer, John Hughes, is a legend of the field. He's written and made things that has turned culture on its head. So, like, he put sorry. in 110% to this. So, like, he wanted a sequel, <laughs> for God's sake. Like any good masterpiece I'm playing devil's advocate because no bad points are evident and oh, we yeah. need someone to play that Bartek are you going to play devil's avocado <laughs> delicious <laughs> no I, but I still have that point I wanted to make what was <laughs> no. your point it was when he was hanging on the ball um, there is a level of terror to that and it is vastly contrasting when he was uh, when the other guy the Mars attacks guy was uh, gripping onto the girder it's on that one it was like almost inevitable. Oh my god! In- <laughs> inevitable, <laughs> inevitable that he would you know slip and fall. Whereas on that one, he had a lot more control to keep him up, but also it meant that he's gonna stay there until something gets done, and that weight is gonna be. And then quite... you go consider you gotta have muscle strength to keep holding on. Mm. Okay, here's the scene. I did like this scene a lot because uh, uh, the other old guy. Who <laughs> is just like not phased at all about a baby? He's like, "This is the baby we found on the TV." None of them oh. phoned the police. <laughs> They're like, "Instead, let's sing war songs to him." How did the baby get in the front door? Obviously, through baby I love- luck. <laughs> I love- 
My favorite thing about his him, his giddiness is when he when he like like dismiss like ah whatever I'm I'm looking at the baby. Yo, like, it's it's there's right here. Yeah, <laughs> baby. Is that typical? Ah, fuck yourself. I'm gonna play with this baby. Talk uh, for this shit. Uh, you know what I really like is the other guy, the one with the glasses. You first blanked him. He reminds me of our friend Will if he was an old man, <laughs> uh, except for like more like a turtle. The dad is completely useless in this movie. It was the nanny oh. that figured it out. Oh no, no, he paid. He paid John Deputy. Yeah, so so John well. Deputy. So Deputy he's John. a walking wallet, is what you're saying. They he don't he provides have, the house. They don't even have subtitles. I'm not saying it, but that's what the movie's showing. <laughs> yeah, what? Well, I was interested in the lyrics, but then oh, flashback way to the start. You remember when he sang "Mary Had a Little Lamb"? Yes. And. For some reason, he didn't sing it to the tune of Mary Had a Little yeah. Lamb. Is Mary Had a Little Lamb copyrighted or what? It may be. I thought it wasn't. But I guess you can't sing Mary Had a Little Lamb. He was like, Mary Had a Little Lamb. <laughs> and I was just like, William <laughs> Shatner. <laughs> Coming back to that. Christopher Walken is Shatner's baby oh, is the guy from God. Matrix. And they're all singing to this baby. And the baby's just like, I'm having a wicked time. I love war. Yeah. When this baby grows up, which he has now... He's grown up. That's why he's a hunky beefcake, because uh, he wants to be a soldier. It makes sense. I'll change the question. Would you fuck that soldier, baby? <laughs> uh, for my country. <laughs> is, is soldier baby like the prequel to soldier boy? <laughs> soldier baby, get along. It's a prequel to that, and a side sequel to small soldiers. Uh, <laughs> literally... Is that unappreciated? Like- it is a movie. I love that movie. <laughs> we all love that movie. Yeah. But is it I as good so as... Much. She's poking the shit out of his little soft spot on the back of his head. You know how babies have that? It's like yeah, a yeah, reset yeah. switch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, for so, all people... So this scene... <laughs> yes. Boo-boo. Let's, uh, let's redirect an entire criminal investigation based upon a child making noises in hey. the car. I've there's not been, seen I'm there's been weirder brilliant. cases. I'm impressed that they caught on. Boo boo. I mean, people still believe in psychics. Yeah, well, you know, this movie could have used William Shatner as the psychic. <laughs> where he's just like, I Sorry. sense that the baby's at the zoo. You know what? That's probably not even the weirdest thing that's happened in Star Trek. No, I've, I've seen weirder. There's oh. been an episode where the doctor falls in love with a bowl of energy. That's good. Cool. <laughs> I like how... Oh, she's hot. I like how she said the word TikTok to the baby to give it, like, a name. TikTok? But then when she talked to the nanny, she still used the word... Was there a TikTok? He's the pointing book? at the TikTok. Uh, it was like, I thought he was getting a new boo-boo. <laughs> no, he means his boo-boo's back there. I love... Uh. This is dialogue worthy of Shakespeare. Radio yeah. Rogers and McCloskey tell them we're going to the TikTok to get the boo-boo. Man, put this on my and grave. And send for back up this guy is dead now and um no he's probably not i think he retired and became a politician actually oh, really? so he could have had as his campaign slogan vote for dalton i'm a fan of tiktoks and boo-boos i wonder if he auditioned for the role of the john gimbal in kindergarten cop hmm. i wonder if he auditioned for the role of clint eastwood in million dollar baby in which he's just like right and he'll be like you gotta you gotta punch left punch right Tick tock boo boo. And she's coming out of the boxing ring and she's like, he's like, looks like you got a boo boo. <laughs> he's like, don't worry. You'll get plenty more, but let's go to the tick tock. <laughs> and then he's just like, yeah. I like how he says, hands up, throw down the boo boo. <laughs> That's another great line. I like how he still has concrete in his eyebrows. Yeah. Yeah. Like the and they've got bruises now yeah. and they're well, really injured. I, I suppose with him, he doesn't want to lose any more hair. You don't see many movies where you deal with the aftermath. I like how he looks like Robert De Niro here. Yeah. (laughs) He was like, like, look at me, I'm De Niro. I get it, you're Italian. The gold chain makes it, I reckon. I think it's a a singlet. (laughs) The wife beat her. It's a different kind of Italian mobster, I guess, to Mm. Fat Tony. Fat Tony. Sorry, Fat Tony. Hey, I'm Fat Tony. Uh, I like how that's just his voice, though. Like, you didn't really have to put much on for Fat Tony. Mm. This is a hexed situation. Wouldn't it be great... Yeah, I love how he's like, it's hexed. Wouldn't it be great if you found out that the guy who plays Fat Tony, he he is actually English? (laughs) 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 He'll be like, like, yeah, it's me, Fat Tony. And then you meet him in real life, he's like, hello, old chap, it's me, Fat Tony. When he's, like, behind in the actor's studio or whatever, like, the behind the scenes of The Simpsons, he's like, well, when I got to the casting hall... And when I I got to the casting... It's like in the TV show Frasier, where his dad's actually English in real life. The actor is English. The the Mars Attack guy had a line earlier that, like, (sighs) 
basically managed to we we did all this stuff and then he's like but we still kept on ticking uh, and now they're at the tiktok oh my god it's so much deeper than i ever this thought this is an emotional piece of film i've mentioned it before john hughes is a master storyteller and i'm really shocked that this movie didn't do well and you know why it didn't do well two words roger Ebert. Mm. He's sunk many a film's reputations, and he's the antagonist of cinema itself. I don't know why people appreciate his criticisms. In fact, he is a de- he was a detriment and a leech. You know what, Ryan? Heretic. You're yep. right. <laughs> Even though Siskel is supposedly, you know, his equal, I noticed that in the few decades after, you didn't hear Siskel's name so much, but you oh. heard Roger Ebert's all the time. I mean, mm. admittedly, he did die. <laughs> yes, I mean, he died. No, no excuses. But honestly. how did he die, Ryan? That's a good question. Uh, some say it was a slow agonizing disease or cancer, but I think it was Roger Ebert poison. <laughs> I think the first thing to die was good cinema. I think the first thing to die was when Siskel got killed by Ebert. You know how he killed him? Clueless. No. Oh, e- wow. Ebert, yeah. Ebert just got out his fangs and milked himself <laughs> into, like, a baguette and gave it to Siskel. <laughs> you dirty no good little stool pigeon. Stool You're surrounded. Pigeon. Throw down the boo-boo. boo-boo. Brilliant. I bet he read that line several times and he was just like, okay, can you imagine him reading the line? He's like, okay, I've got to read it like this. And the director was like, no, 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 you're reading it too shit. Like, this is a serious piece of right. cinema. you got to say it like, throw down the boo-boo. And he's like, well, I was just going to say, throw down the boo-boo. All right, all right John. Um, shift in accents there. <laughs> all right, John, uh, we, uh, we're liking where you're going with this movie. Um, we're going to need you to do the boo-boo line. Just, just a few more times. Throw down the boo boo. <laughs> yeah, um, I'm really questioning uh, your direction. Okay, okay. I, I, I'm gonna say it more emotionally. Throw down the boo boo. Yep. Cut. Um, take. Print. And there's a guy on the side being like, "I don't like what you're doing with this movie. Thumbs down." <laughs> that was right. Shame on you, Gene. Can we have a plot plot twist? It was David. <laughs> Roger Ebert was on set. <laughs> You know what? This movie is nice enough to tell you when the movie's finishing. It what just said. twist Roger Ebert made this movie? <laughs> oh my god. All the things he hates in this movie, and yet he made it. <laughs> He's on purposely doing it so he can review movies in a negative effect. What if he just made every movie be <laughs> movie? Yeah, and he was really shy about it? What a conspiracy. Wouldn't it be great if you were like, you were saying like, thumbs down. Like, wouldn't it be great if you thought it was Roger Ebert and it just pairs over as David Stratton? From Margaret and David, <laughs> cooking his white beard. <laughs> and he yeah. just has a habit of saying, shame on you, Gene. Uh. <laughs> and I love that. Oh, wait, here it is. So my favorite thing about this scene is the, da- the baby got kidnapped. They do leave the baby alone in a room with no security guards. They don't even, like, spend the night with it. They're like, well, that was a big day. Let's plunk him in here by himself. We have learnt nothing. With barely any, like, rails. We changed nothing. Yeah, we've nothing. learnt nothing, and I knew. I'm like, holy shit, he's gonna grab a book. Here is it gonna go. be a sequel? But I did not expect the sequel to be... What was it, like, Baby Baby's go- Trip, Baby's trip to, to China. China. And oh. I did not expect that. And he just, like, wait, it does that thing where it's, like, he's giggling, huh? Yeah. And then, you know what all 90s movies did? He did this at the end. All 90s movies did that piece of music where the music is promising, oh, it's going to happen, which is that kind of thing where it's like the the keys are going like... And it's just like this... Like, you get the feeling that the music is rushing towards the character to give this sense of, like, oh, the sequel's going to come... Like, the trailer, 90s did that. Trailers do that as well. Yeah, trailers, yeah. but 90s movies ended with that on scenes. Mm. Like, it's also for, uh, I think, potential investors in true artworks that actually have good taste would uh, see this and be more inclined to spend Paul money. Sonsky? Is he Polish? Sonsky? Maybe. But it, it, it is ski. It wouldn't be Paul, it would be Pavel. A lot of genius. Oh. Hmm. So. <laughs> Troy Borisy? Is he Russian y? Hmm. Russian y? That was a good joke, me. No, it was also terrible. Jan Evans is it, if it's Polish it's Jan Evans. What about Devlin <laughs> Brindford Jones? <laughs> unlike unlike just just fucking hold Terry on, hold D. On. That Devlin guy, he was a techno crane technician. Oh shit, dog. He's a techno crane. So the movie has now ended. An mm. emotional piece of cinema. Oh, what about David Chem- Chemerski? <laughs> if it's Polish it'd be Chemerski. 
Really? Because CH is like an H kind of sound. Ooh la la. Guys, I'm going to be honest. I'm still coming off this tour de force, and I don't know what to do with myself. Well, well you obviously better... you have to come. Jeez. <laughs> <laughs> you have to do something, Oliver, because this is the part where we do our reviews. So we're going to do oh. our reviews now. And this is the emotional part. I'm going to go first because I'm just super keen. Mm -hmm. <sighs> this movie. What a spicy meatball. That was my impersonation of Fat Tony. <laughs> what a spicy meatball. No, let me do a proper impersonation. What a spicy meatball. There you go. That was as good uh, as my Roger <laughs> I thought he was in the room with me. I am. I'm here. Wow. Thanks, Jennifer. Uh, my review is this. This was a movie that we had. I had no relationship to. I came from this completely blind and completely from a not like from, you know, a non-emotional standpoint. I could have hated this movie. I could have loved it. And I loved it. Yes, I unfortunately had a different expectation of the movie that was not there. Or was it? We don't know. It's up to you to interpret. This movie brought laughter. Nothing but laughs. Yes, it could have had more emotional weight. Yes, it could have had more characterization. Yes, the movie could have not have just plonked us in the situation and said, hey, take it, lady, take it raw. But sometimes you need a movie. Lady or baby? Lady. Oh, lady baby. Lady baby. Sometimes you need a movie like this that's aimed for a smaller audience, but it's aimed to just entertain. Sometimes we don't need to be set up. Sometimes... You just need to be taken on that ride. And what a ride this was. Might my add, my some guy in the model makers is called How Howie Weed. But, oh, <laughs> um, wow. Howie Weed made this movie what it is. Some people say that this is one of John, during John Hughes's down period. But John Hughes is a legend to everyone who appreciates cinema and pop culture. For me, this is right up there with my personal favorite, Planes, Trains, and Automobiles. This is equally as good, if not better. So, what I have to say about this movie is check it out if you haven't. It is a movie that promises so much and delivers on every single one of those promises. I'm going to give this a rating, of course. What kind of rating do I have to give it? It's so hard to say in such a cynical world in which we can't even ask an innocent question like, would you fuck that baby? I would have to give this... Um, I mean, it's so hard to say, but I'd have to give this 20 nut shots out of 5 nut shots. I cannot believe you used that metric. That was actually what I was going <laughs> So you give it 4. I give oh it 4 God. nut shots out of 10. No. Um... Jennifer, let's hear your review. Now that I've stolen your rating, you have to come up with Oh my quick. god, this entire time... Oh, <laughs> You're not, like, I'm sitting on the nuts. I cannot... Wow, okay. I'm gonna be honest, I had a little bit of a history with this movie. So coming into it, um, I had seen bits of it was when I was younger, and it occurred to me, because I knew of the movie, and I had sort of, like that thing where you, when you're very young you see a movie perhaps it was in the background while your parents were you know just put it on um at a random time but you do get sort of like random flashes at certain points you don't really have a full concept of what the movie is in its entirety before you watch it so watching this again in its entirety i realize what i truly missed as a youngin and i honestly think it's made me the man that i am today um whether mm -hmm. it's consciously or subconsciously and I think everyone would be amiss if they were to, to remove this from their life. Um, it's an experience that it's just unparalleled and it takes you to places, many of which you don't want to go. I laughed, I cried, I felt things that may not be in the strictest sense legal, but <laughs> it is a great experience all the same. And I think it, it, it's fit for everyone. And even if those people give them thumbs down, even if it wasn't critically acclaimed, I think everyone in their heart of hearts truly knew the value of this piece of cinematic artwork. Um, I'm going to give it uh, 17 fucked babies out of 17. Wow, that's a lot of fucked babies. It so, is. Throughout the whole entire experience, you were denying answering the question, but he has now answered that he would fuck 17 babies. 
<laughs> you know, I got <laughs> out to, of seventeen you know, babies. I got, that's like mate, a I, lot of babies. I got to sixteen, and I'm like, I could probably go one more. <laughs> My dick could probably take one more. I love how in that review he referred to Roger Ebert as these people. <laughs> yeah, <I laughs> he really, doesn't deserve. I really wanted name. to interrupt and go. When you said these people, you mean just one guy, right? No, it's he who shall not be named. <laughs> Let's put it that it's, way. It's. Yeah, it's Ebert who shall not be named. <laughs> so, Bartek, let's hear from you. Yeah, take a deep breath. This is a big one. <laughs> yeah, I, I should have probably had some water, but okay. Uh, the movie we watched was the 1994 classic Baby's Day Out. That's so obvious it's almost not even worth pointing out. What's wrong mm. with me? It was a great movie. We cannot deny that because we've already had two reviews and Ryan's already got the IMDb reviews ready. I'm so cute. <laughs> and what did this movie give us? It gave us holy shit, it gave us so much. Ryan, how many no how many pages of notes did you do for this movie? Five. Oh my god. Five what? pages of notes is what it gave for Ryan. And yes, five pages of notes. For me a lot of notes. For me, this movie was much like what the baby did. It was a, it was a journey, an odyssey. <laughs> and much like in the baby's odyssey, it didn't happen over a long period of time. Like we mentioned at the end there that it's sequel cliffhanged kind of for a baby's trip to China. And I noticed that that title, it didn't have the word day or anything in there. Mm. It was trip. So it kind yeah. of like implied, oh, this is going to be like a really kind of long, long journey, long experience. Mm. Probably with, three Chinese kidnappers this time, which, what sort of jokes would we have there? But uh, I'm, 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 I'll be honest, I'm kind of going on a tangent. Come back, I'm Martha. talking about the idea that it was a, a journey in a short period of time, a day. Mm. Much, much like the movie itself for us, the audience. It was a 98.49 minute movie. Yeah, yeah, it's like 99 basically, so yeah. yeah well, one hour, 38 minutes, let's just say rounding down. <sighs> It was a brief journey, and it, it made you feel like you were in the movie. Like, I mentioned earlier in the baby's bum scene... Yeah, that, um, that classic. All movies should have a baby's bum You're scene. still thinking about it, aren't you? That I... <laughs> I was immersed there because I was thinking, ooh, this is a thing that exists that I don't really <laughs> want to be there, but the, the fact that it's making me feel is something that a lot of movies should do. And you guys yourselves have said that various things in this movie has made, uh, sorry, have made you feel. Like, Ryan, you brought up the nut shots making you cross your legs. Mm. And Oliver talked about how the whole thing of the guy, uh, Eddie, uh, yeah. Fat, Tony, Fat Tony, being on that ball made him... Truly terrified. Truly terrified. Mm. Struck a, struck it a is cord. an emotional movie that gives you a lot to think about, to feel about, to... Think about. Wow. I know I said that twice, but even the supplementary. It's it's important to think more than once. <laughs> yeah. That's that's life, Ryan. <laughs> Double think. That's that's life. You got to think more than once. Yeah, exactly. And even even Sega, a company yeah. that was busy working with Sonic the Hedgehog at this time, the Sonic the Hedgehog, whether he was the Jaleel White mm. version or not, that's <laughs> completely out of the question. Well, I thought more than once it was all the time. <laughs> They thought, and they're a video game company, they, they, they don't have business working with movies, but they did here. Wow. There's a lot more I could say, but I think I should just get to the rating yeah, because was, you're, I, you're excited about uh, the IMDb I, I, I'm just excited to hear, I hope that your rating is going to be what I hope it is, but uh, go on. I don't <laughs> Go on. <laughs> if I had to give this movie a rating, if I had to give this movie a rating, I would, I have to once again listen to my heart, Ryan. Listen to it. Heart, what 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 do you have to say? Uh huh. And then it's like my left arm's numb. Uh huh. Oh, yours is a cold bitch too. Okay. Come on. Ooh, ooh. My heart just said a kind of kind of iffy thing. But okay, if that's what you said, that's what I'll go with. Heart, ladies and gentlemen, I give this movie a. Ha <laughs> ha
<laughs> that was it. <laughs> yeah. Just the noise. Okay, not what I was expecting. I was expecting Bart to go, I give this movie two thoughts out of two. Ah. <laughs> no, no, Ryan. Don't you understand what it means? I think Bart is trying to say that this movie exceeds standard ratings and words and even modern language. Well, guys, let's, I feel slow, like down. I've let's already... slow down. Okay, let's not interpret it. Bartek's meaning. It's for you, the audience, to... In fact... Right on our Facebook page, when you think Bartek <laughs> refuses, there is a correct answer. But because we're moving on, I'm not going to say it. We're uh, not going to say it. You just put, you'll be a mystery for the ages. He'll tell us afterwards, and we'll know. But you, you'll have to try and figure it out. It's I one of those will, mysteries. So it's like why does the Mona Lisa smile? Who knows? Hmm. But let's go with this classic review from 2001. A uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, eight star review Ooh. called Oh Baby. Baby. Yeah, baby. Oh. oh, baby. I already love it, and I can't even read it. Uh, yes, uh, uh, I'm reading it. And after this, uh, Jennifer has managed to also bring some interesting comments mm. along. So we'll hear that after. But let's go through some of these. This is how it starts. Dumb laughs are easy to come by. Dumb characters are even easier. But when you get a movie that is so endearingly goofy dumb as Baby's Day Out, you can't help but love it. The plot is straight out of Cartoon Land, with a low blow in the Three Stooges direction. Compliments of scriptwriter of of scripter John Hughes, and then in brackets, surprise. <laughs> three of the dimmest kid, three of the dimmest kidnappers in history make the mistake of kidnapping a rich couple's little baby who turns out to be far more resourceful than all three of the men combined oh, and a lot more ruthless sick burn he outgrew them yeah a lot more ruthless during the course of the day baby bink leads the dumb guys throughout the width and breadth of chicago and leaves them all bruised beaten burnt plummeted from an innumerable height from innumerable high drops and otherwise humiliated and then in brackets, we've had the living hell torn out of us by a baby, mm. screams Fat Tony at one point. They don't say Fat Tony, but I don't know how to say the guy's last name. Cause oh, I, can I have a look? Have a look. Mantegna. Mantegna? Man, that's what, yeah, Mantegna. That's the Mantegna, then. Mm. Mantegna? Mantegna. Mm. I'm going to call him Fat Tony. <laughs> <laughs> and all the while, we're laughing. I saw this in the theatre when it first came out, and I must admit, the entire packed-in audience was laughing hysterically at every single pratfall, gag, and slapstick business that occurred. I love this kind of movie, and seeing the great Fat Tony takes his lumps so valiantly brings a smile in itself. It's a nice day. It's a ni- It's nice to play dumb once in a while, and even nicer to witness it. Eight stars for Baby's Day Out. If you like such laughs, if you, if you like such laughs, it'll make your day. Oh, <laughs> that. Now this amazing. next review is ludicrous but cute and very funny. Oh. Eight stars, written in two thousand and six. Seeing a trend here. Two thousand and six. Two thousand and six. Credibility wise, this is one of the most ludicrous movies you'll ever see, but it's fun and I would think almost anyone would enjoy it. It's basically Home Alone, out on the streets and with a baby instead of a small boy. A baby goes wandering all over the big city with two kidnappers. Two kidnappers? (laughs) Two kidnappers. I guess the guy from The Matrix was just their friend. There is no kidnapper. (laughs) Two kidnappers chasing it. People are everywhere, but nobody sees the babies but the bad guys? Hey, I told you it made no sense, but there are so many laughs in here, so many goofy slapstick routines at work, that it's worth your time to check it out. I've seen it a couple of times and thoroughly enjoyed it each time, as have my guests, from kids to older folks. To older so, folks. so this guy's showing the movie to other people. <laughs> he's showing it to kids to older folks. What kind of? So Bart, just for reference, Bartek when he heard older folks just furiously fist bump. <laughs> no, it's I love it when they bring up people. <laughs> yeah. Okay, to movie buffs, it's kind of fun to see. It's kind of fun to see Fat Tony playing roles in which profanity is at a minimum, and they are in it only for the laughs. It's a long way from most of his roles, 
Fat Tony is especially impressive with his comedy. I was shocked how funny he was. The only criticism I had, other than the totally preposterous story being a little too far-fetched, is that one scene at the construction site went on too long. Mm. The movie as a whole would have been better if it had been if it had been cut about 15 minutes. It's basically a one-joke movie and 99 minutes is too long for that. Oh. Overall, this is a nice this is a nice entertainment with a lot of laugh out loud scenes. If you get a kick out of seeing a baby constantly laugh, giggle and have a great time, then you'll really love this. <laughs> like, if that's your <laughs> other, if that's your thing, you'll love this. You also probably like parenthood. Yeah, I love parenthood. Mm. Um next one is a short one from 1999. You have kids, Ryan? You like parenthood? I love that. I love being a parent. No, next one is Cute, friendly, and smelly diapers. Oh, hilarious. They have no stars in this, but in the rating they do. Um, great film, in my opinion. Baby Bink is unbelievably cute. With his dimples, playfulness, and giggle, it is hard to believe why it bombed. I think it deserves major props for being kid friendly instead of a instead of the hardcore things people are used to seeing. Mm. It's it is great for all ages. A ten out of ten, spectacular. These kids with their <laughs> rock music and their Legend of Zelda. They should get back to cute laughs and dimples. <laughs> so this next one is I hurt myself laughing. Well, Nine stars. How many exclamation marks? Two, three, three. I hurt myself laughing. <laughs> I didn't say. Written in two thousand and two. This is one of those films that should be watched whenever you're feeling really down. Oh. I have it. I found it. I've found it impossible to not laugh and then feel better while watching this film. Mm. You can't take this film seriously, however. It's as if a Warner Brothers cartoon was brought to life. So you have to suspend your disbelief and you just enjoy Fat Tony and his hapless lackeys. Joe does a great job with the character. Please, if you watch this film and don't like it, write me and let me know why you didn't like it. <laughs> <laughs> what? Wait, I like to know. <laughs> oh. Oh. Now, this next reviewer is very much in the similar vein as we are. I think they've tapped into something. Yes, some negatives and some positives. This is a seven-star review. 2005. And it's called Terrific Piece of Postmodernism. <laughs> 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 there seems to be little point in regurgitating the plot lines that it is both basic to the point of invisibility and a rehash of the dreary Home Alone series. The film is a cartoon devoid of the moralizing one would expect in a children's film. Mm. Concerned as it most obviously is so with the fundamental laws of cause and effect. Oh, yes, of course. And then in brackets, pretend you are a banana. Be prepared to be attacked by a hungry gorilla. I'm going to be honest, I kind of want to slap this dude, and I've never met him. End brackets. Or woman. They're from New Zealand, so if that helps. Oh. <laughs> they are. So why do an English like, you have to do a... No, nah, I'm not doing that, because this is... Maybe they're one of those New Zealanders that have Imagine those you're English... Imagine you a banana. You know those, those older New Zealanders that have still the British accents? Yeah. Okay, so... Even the baby is far is is more aware of the universal principles than the villains who spend the entirety of the film being assaulted by inanimate objects in the same manner as Wiley e. Coyote. Mm. They put the whole Wiley e. Coyote, like the aforementioned canine. The, <laughs> it's not a canine. <laughs> the criminals' inherent badness, inherent badness and nefariousness of their motives dictates their failure, no matter what form of their actions may take. The two standout scenes are the fiery groin number C for choice dialogue above. And the zoo-based action. Like much of the film, a tissue of quotations indeed, the ending, set on a building site, borrows entirely from elements of popular culture, including the Donkey Kong video game. And... <laughs> what? And, okay. Construction and, site, yeah. And the Donald Duck cartoon, The Riveter. It would be a stern-hearted viewer, indeed, who could not see the funny side of someone being whacked in the face by a falling hammer. Can I say really Seven quickly, stars. <laughs> can I say really quickly, you know the type of guy th this reminds me of? The, okay, if you've, seen, if you've seen the Simpsons episode where, um, 
what's his name? The nerd steps up and says, In episode uh, 4B2-36, <laughs> Ichi next, uh, smacks, oh, yeah, yeah. Smacks, uh, scratches ribs twice, hitting the same rib, and it produces two different notes. What are we meant to believe? This is a magic xylophone. I love hope someone got forgot Yeah, fired. comic book guy wrote this. Yes. Now, wouldn't it be a plot twist if it was Roger Ebert? <laughs> <laughs> so this is the last one. He is comic book guy. So. Funny, farcical, and sweet. Nine stars, written in 2007. Oh. My nine-year-old buddy and I enjoyed almost... <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> My nine-year-old buddy and I enjoyed, way. <laughs> enjoyed almost everything about this Why movie. Why did you clarify that he was nine years old? <laughs> because he is not nine what? years old. I'm going we're to be great, We're going to be this guy's like 40 years old. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, my nine-year-old buddy enjoyed almost everything about this movie. Fat Tony is excellent, and the slapstick is hilarious. I recommend this movie for anyone who likes movies like Home Alone. The farce is a bit violent, I suppose, but not any worse than your average Bugs Bunny cartoon. A few of the special effects are transparent, but that's okay. Wouldn't want some of the scenes to seem too real. Mm. The gorilla scene is one of the best I've seen. It may be silly to give this movie such a high rating, but it really, but, but it really is pure amusement and light comedy. The movie has withstood the test of time too. I first saw it when it came out and watched it again for the first time in a few year in in years a few days ago. Predictable, yes, but the sort of anticipation that keeps us ready to laugh. Here's the thing, he saw this in 1994, writing this in 2007, and he's a nine-year-old friend. How old is this guy? <laughs> <laughs> well, the thing is, Talking about baby fucking. He doesn't, okay, he doesn't say anything about his own age. I'm just curious, you could just say, my buddy and I saw this. What does it add to the review to know the buddy's <laughs> Because age? the nine-year-old buddy's nine years old. So, but what does that add? <laughs> what, what, like, how do you, A okay. difference of ages enjoying the same so thing. So, Jennifer okay. has some that uh, you brought along yourself that you read on uh, on a site. Some okay, I, I will critiques. not say the site. Um, now, to respect the site. <laughs> yeah. And, it's and too it's, credible. Yeah, and it's credibility. I mean, we don't want to... Don't say Luna film. But do no. go on. Do go on. Tell us tell us what people had. So, some, some of the best ones. There are a few, and there are at least two or three, and especially one long one I'm going to end with. Um, uh, go on. The starting one, the very first comment on the entire list. How many years ago? 12 years ago. <laughs> <laughs> so this is almost half as long as it was. Okay, so if you imagine like the difference in time between 1994 and now, it's almost like yeah. the middle way. Middle, middle so it was 12 between. years ago. That's older than a nine-year-old buddy. Yeah, It'd be just after me. Yeah. Oh, there was the nine-year-old buddy. Yeah. Go on. Anyway, um, the comment simply says, and it's very short, I can tolerate it. I still thought it was pretty funny the 85th time I saw it. <laughs> <laughs> I have a number of questions. <laughs> 85. How yeah. was the 64th time? I think it was the... Yeah, I think once they get to 100, they're going to be solid. Now, most of these are written in, like, standard English. This this one is 11 years ago again. Um, It was written in all caps. So just imagine I'm yelling this yeah, in your I, face. Yeah, I'm, I'm imagining the Do yelling. Do some whisper yelling. Juvenile slapstick! A sort of baby version of Home Alone. As stupid as it is, there are a few chuckles in this one. Predictable, harmless fun. <laughs> <laughs> I just love the old caps. This one's a little bit more serious. Okay, it's a little bit longer, mm-hmm. but I think it really encapsulates everything that's going that, that was going on in the movie. Okay, a wonderfully refreshing, witty, comical, and even spiritually uplifting family movie. Those who have panned this film obviously don't have a real clue about it, this genre of filmmaking. These people simply cannot see beyond the surface entertainment value of any movie. Unless it titillates their vulgar senses, in some way they go away unfulfilled. So sad, really. But for those who can enjoy the subtle symbolism of a carefully and well-crafted story, Baby's Day Out is a delightful commentary on life and what we can choose to see or not see. During our adventures to this earthly sphere, <laughs> and, uh, quotations unless you become as a child the master taught you can in no wise <laughs> inherit the kingdom of heaven <laughs> end quote <laughs> and, th- 
And there is far more power in seeing this life through the eyes of a child than one might guess. This is a movie you can watch with your children, your grandchildren, and the whole family. It will delight you and leave you with an unexpected feeling of joy and an enhanced belief in yourself and the basic goodness inherent in this world you hadn't previously guessed. You know what? I think you you want this guy on your show. <laughs> Wouldn't it be great up. if this guy was the a guy who wrote the other review as oh well? Oh my god! Which one? The one that was really wanky and was like <laughs> the trepid, you know, the nefariousness of them. They understand the laws and principles of the universe. No, okay. Before Bartek mentioned one about olive oil. Oh um, yeah, I actually mm. was going to ask you if that went. There anywhere. was a review that I almost put in, but it was too long. The review was basically the exact summary of the plot of that Popeye episode. Yeah. And just said at the end, can you see the similarities the big from for Baby's Day Out? And that was it. Like they went for like three chap like three paragraphs of description of that Popeye episode and then just at the end See the comparisons, <laughs> and I'm like, I guess. Oh, wow. So I didn't include that because it wasn't as interesting enough, but you brought it up. I just thought that would be really fun to mention. So wow. this guy, I'm just amazed that he included, like, what I believe to be Bible quotes in his review. Well, mention like, the about... ki- inheriting the kingdom of heaven. I think that might be a Bible yeah. quote. Yeah. Uh, look, if you had to quote anything, it would be the Bible <laughs> for, for Baby's Day Out. Oh, my God. So, Baby's Day Out. Anything we want to talk about it before we finish up, guys? I was <laughs> glad we're off the pedophilia issue. What was that? No, 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 more, no. More no, pedophilia? No, 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 no. So, no, if no, there was no. more than 17 babies, <sighs> would Jennifer fuck him? Uh, hmm. Well, he would... Which came first, the chicken or the egg? <laughs> That's a good question. Which came well, first, me or the baby? Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> but... <laughs> No, I can't take this. I like, nodded at that one. It's like that was a good one. I'm very proud of myself. Go on. Oh no, I was just gonna say, you know, when he gave his review, he was like, "Oh, I did 16. Maybe I try for a 17. I don't know if he could handle an 18." Oh no, I don't you think so. What? I'm not sure I can. So that was the movie, Baby's Big Day Out. Not Big Day Out. Baby's Day Out. Big Baby's Day Out. Big Day Out. <laughs> <laughs> out Big Baby. Yeah, yeah, like it goes on and on. You <laughs> guys can make your own version. <laughs> they of should this. make. They should make a modern day sequel. Just the ba- like the grown up kid now is just doing a normal. The same exact job. movie, but with the grown up kid. Yeah, and it's called like it's called like Binks Day Out. <laughs> oh no, no, no! I was just thinking, just you know. He's a guy now, he has a job, and it's just a day at work. It'd be a five-minute video, because they come <laughs> no. over to shoot his picture. No, like, it's a five-hour movie of his shift at work. <laughs> That's one thing, yeah. No, I'm, I'm, just imagine, no, guys, I'm just imagining that the, the, the kidnappers come over, they're like, oh, we're going to kidnap this kid. They walk in, and there's, like, ripped baby bink, and they're like, oh, Shit. nope. I really like the idea that it's a documentary about the actor, and he's just working at Hungry Jack's oh, McDonald's, McDonald's, and he just gets kidnapped for real by Fat Tony. <laughs> It's taken four. <laughs> by the Simpsons character? But, no, 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 no. By the, act, by the same actors, they're kidnapping him for real, and this time they're lopping up fingers. Oh, my God. And he has God. to escape the way he did in the movie. Baby Big Luster Pinky. By waiting for someone to fall asleep while... Yeah, sleep. and then and then the twin brothers just like, I wish I would be doing this adventure, because he's mm. the twins. So... That's that. a good point, right? We don't know what their voices sound yeah. like. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's what the fat one sounds like. Well, the sexy one's just like... He's just like... Yeah, I was a baby. Want to fuck me? Yeah. Oh my God. <laughs> Looks so deceiving. It's like when Oliver brought up the fat lady, how she's probably ripped under yeah. the dress. Totally. The fat lady who's boo. She didn't know it. Okay, t- t- tell, me, t- tell me I'm wrong. She did not know she was carrying a baby because the weight was so, like... Irrelevant, because she she was so strong she didn't notice like that you're, it was. You're wrong, yeah. Jennifer. <laughs> you said I could call you anything and tell you right now. Uh, you're wrong. The woman was just so fat that she couldn't notice any more weight, because she just lost the perception of weight difference. <laughs> look, if I was one to fuck with people, like babies. I would not fuck with her. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, she did beat the shit out of them. That is the truth. But you guys have been fantastic, wonderful, amazing listening people. I'm glad you could have joined us here on the panel for this amazing classic film. It brought us joy, it brought us eroticism, it brought us (laughs) sadness. Until next time, 
be uh. amazing and kind to each other. And if you want to request a movie, such as Jennifer did with this, mm. you can drop a line to our Facebook page, which is Spit and Polish Presents. You can suggest a movie. Because, hey, we could have missed out on this movie if it wasn't for Jennifer and Peter and Oliver. And you could have a movie that you're waiting to hear from us, and we may never do that movie. That's just a sad reality of it. We don't know everything. Mm. Also, there are funny pics, lol. There are funny pics and videos and cool extra little content on the page. Of course, you can subscribe to our stuff on iTunes and Podbean, Spin Polish Presents. It's all amazing stuff. I love memes. Memes. I love memes. I don't know if we do memes, but they're fun. Uh, we have running jokes. We have running jokes. Until next time, guys, remember to be kind to each other. I know there's still one question you know, that the audience is asking. I'll just say, um, <clears throat> LOL means laugh out loud. Oh. <laughs>